what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate, Uncut and After Show. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already, how dare you, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support this channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are premiering, if that's even a word. There's also a PayPal uh, crypto and uh, Patreon link in the info box below the video. Speaking of Patreon, I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of you who do support me on Patreon. So a massive shout out to Adrian Quintana, Alistair Main, Billy Highvolt, Burn Fat Till My Stomach Is As Flat As The Earth, Chow Young Cat, Dank, David Wayne Foster, Edwin Johnson, Felix Hung, Fireball X, God Rockin', Jeronism, Kirsten Smith, Life is Short, Matt, Michael, Paige, Katar Craig, Ryan Hart, Rene, Sam Hine, Skeptic936, Texas Mike, TheFlatEarthChannel.com, Tina Baker, and Tom Herkins. Massive thank you to all of you for supporting me on Patreon. Now we're actually in the interim stages between two live debates, so I'm going to actually pass over to both Discord and G Plus <coughs> servers, if you can call them that. And you can enjoy their dulcet tones while I set up for the next live show. Don't all speak at once. Let's talk shop, man. Hey, what's this? I've been Nathan Oakley. I know we talked about this before, but I want you to go into this more while you're working. So what you're saying is, I've been Nathan Oakley. Are you going to be anybody else anytime soon? No, that's me. I am Nathan <laughs> Oakley. <laughs> Uh, oh boy hey let's talk shop man voice meter banana I watched the video you sent me and was more right. confused than before I watched that video I know I you know I thought about that I said damn I shouldn't have sent it to him man he's gonna get more confused I thought it brought more clarity to me hopefully so because you're the one setting it up mine works <laughs> so <laughs> that's <laughs> let's hope so up, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I know I can go through the first video I sent you and and just say, listen to what he says here and do it, and it'll work at the end. So I'm pretty listen, confident. The, the only difference is where he was sending um, Discord. Well, I'm sorry. The only difference was the only was only at the end where he was hooking it up to OBS. He okay. he hooked it to. He he went to uh, B one the um, uh, V A V O V A I O instead of auxiliary. That was the only big difference. And the reason why he did that is he piped his mic through to Discord for with B two instead of B one. I see. So he's got it set. So what what he wants to be able to do is separate his mic out between whether or not it goes to Discord or. To the live audience whereas i'm lazy i've just got it so it all goes out through one output yeah that's the only difference i think i, I haven't even downloaded voice meter banana and i think i got it um the only problem that i have is with the the first hardware input my mic oh that's something i can help you with then because in that regard the, the the fact that it's a digital desk makes no difference in terms of how the inputs and outputs work, and that's something I learned about in college. So, that res in that respect, it just works like any other sa any other any other desk. So it's just uh, you know understanding the logic of inputs and outputs on desks, and with your mic going in on whichever audio what do they call them virtual audio cable, I, I can wrap my head around that without too much difficulty. I this means it's going from this to that. No, because no, I don't have a problem with that. I, I, I understand that. It's just the first one, the first hardware input. It, said, it, it has you identify the mic. Well, I got two mics. I got my computer mic, and then I got my headphone, and my headphones and mic is attached to one thing. But I don't want to use my headphones and mic combination. I'd like to use just the computer mic, right? But it's crap. But that's a problem. What happens when I plug in 
if it's connected to my sound card, well, that might be probably. I don't know. I don't know either because I've only got one mic, that, and it's you know that might be something to, to to invest in. You know, spend ten bucks on a on a little desktop mic, and then that's just your mic, and it's not on your headset, but it's always like Arwin's got. You know, just a little mic. They're not that expensive. But I can use my speakers because I want to use my speakers with it. But that brings in another problem. That's okay. I think I can solve it. <laughs> yeah, the feedback I, problem. I th- that's that's in a yeah. That that that'll be your room and how you position things, which is just something I can't help you with. Oh, you can't. Huh? No, but yeah, I know. I got it. Now, how about Skype? See, Skype should be hooked up the same way as Discord, right? I can hook it up to Hardware Three. Yeah, you, you just set it as one of the virtual audio cables. Yeah, it, ha- it doesn't have to go into VA. IO or auxiliary it could just go into the third because I'm going to use my mic and then eventually discord but my main guy is Skype initially so I just go into the audio settings my Skype audio is so crappy um, and and it goes it. I want to say it gives me different choices every time I try to hook up to whether it be my mic remember when you call me I say hold on Nathan right I can't hear you and I got to switch the settings inside Skype. For some reason, it's all screwed up. Yeah. But anyway, I, I, I think I think I got it. I don't think it's that difficult. Well, that's because you're you're of the mindset to research how to do something, get an understanding of how it works, and then go forward and implement the thing. Well, yeah, that's not how most people work. Most people go and download the thing, plug it in, and go. Why doesn't it work? <laughs> 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 if, can you see somebody with voice meter banana not knowing anything about mm. it and then downloading it and then trying it yeah me Jeez. like me <laughs> <laughs> and I still don't get it I tried the tutorial thing it just didn't work I, li- I like that your logic is so alien that you'd like why on earth would anybody like not research something go and get it and then wonder why they don't understand it it's like, yeah, have you ever not seen any Joe Normal go and buy a car? <laughs> Joe Normal. Well, yeah, but, yeah, that car is different because you've been in a car, your other people got cars, the family members have got cars, you've ridden in cars. That's totally different. Voice meter banana. If you just download it and say, oh, I'll just download this sound, this, this mixer, and I'll get it. Ain't going to happen. Yeah, but most, that's what my point is. Most people would treat the mixer like the car. Uh, they must be, you, you must be insane. I couldn't do that. So that's so against my nature, man. Couldn't do it. Fair enough. That's what I'm saying, though. That's your general logic. Most people's general logic is I'll just download it and I'll be able to figure it out. <laughs> and I said, Who are those insane people? And you said, That was me. <laughs> Yeah, Patricia Steer and Zoe Scribner both helping me. So I'd I'd got it all connected up as far as I thought it should work. And I had Patricia on Skype, Zoe on Google Plus, and me on my mic. And I was just trying to get all of them to talk to each other without any feedback and so that everyone could hear each other. And I did that on like my third channel. I did that on Oakley Cord. And you know, they were very patient and they just, you know, can you talk now? Can you hear me? And I'm having to call them up on phones. Because obviously all the stuff's connected, so I can't actually communicate with them in any meaningful that's way. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. You can't do it because you're on your computer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've had some problems with that. Yeah. So you're like, is it feeding back? And you're like, I can't hear what you're saying because it's feeding back. Ah, oh, it's going nuts. And you've got audio chaos while you're trying to ask somebody <laughs> if they can hear you or something. You know, that's it. <laughs> I've got, I've still got those shows published. You know, they're just a total yeah, joke. It's not familiar. It's just. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, it's hilarious. Sounds like my parents so when confused. they were installing their new music studio, right? Their old house. Yeah. <laughs> Ob, I, I, I down the OBS isn't that hard, it, it, but it'll get hard if you try to have people in a hangout and you're trying to institute other hangouts on OBS. I got lost. I said, "Where are you guys?" <laughs> Because exactly, they were. That, that's yeah, precisely yeah, yeah. why I wanted the monitor upgrade. Shout out to everyone on Patreon for supporting me. Um, because that's exactly the problem. You, you actually need to have eyeballs on everything, and you need everything to be a running process that you can see. So, 
just by casting my eyes around now with a bit more screen real estate, I can see the Hangout, the Discord server, the live um, thing that I need to start doing. Jesus, it's time to go live. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's what I mean, though. I'd have missed that if it wasn't on screen. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. If, if, if that wasn't literally in my eye, what do they call it on the, a plane? The scan. Yep. It's now in the scan, but before it wasn't. You know, it's all on top of each other. So it's like, you know, somebody comes on to porn bomb the show. You've got to, you can hear people going, oh, by the way, there's someone with their cock out on your show. On your show. And you're like, where the hell is the show? <laughs> you know, I've got, <laughs> I've got Discord, I've got Desk, I've got the live stream. I've got the chat because I'm talking to somebody. Where's the show? Well, it's buried, isn't it? You've got to go and find the tab. You know, it, it's not, it's Did not now, easy. Can you, do you have voice meter banana up always? Yeah. See, I'm going to have a little problem with that, but I think I can, over I got two screens. I got a big screen and then my laptop screen, but I think I can, I don't know. Let me see how I'm going to work that. Oh, what a day. What a lovely day. Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Live. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this channel, or you've not done so already, how dare you, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live. There's also a PayPal, Patreon, and crypto link in the info box below the video. Most importantly, if you'd like to join this discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth debate. Now we are joined by Chocolate Saiyan, Arwin, Anon Moto, Paul and Tenth Man, together with Quantum Eraser on Skype and G+. Welcome one and all. Hello, hello. Yeah. Wow, that was enthusiastic. We're also joined by a whole bunch of people on Discord. Very good to have you all also. Hello, Nathan. It's really good to be here. Oh, I'm so pleased. It's so exciting to be live. Maybe they're nervous. They're all hiding in the ever. shadows. Well, we didn't. We didn't get through housekeeping last time, which is uh, kind of good in a way because it means that it's uh, not inappropriate to do it again. Because this is technically the second live show. If you're watching this on Sunday, Nathan Oakley, nineteen eighty channel, welcome as well. Any signs of Earth curvature? Nope. Not nope. on the uh, Earth. signs of axial rotation of the earth-based variety no 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 because then you would need actual curvature and that curvature would have to be cumulative to the point where it becomes a ball and then you can have an axis and then how do you put an axis on well, the ball i'm not really sure okay oh, no, oh yeah but is there any go on is there any axial rotation of the non-Earth-based variety? Yeah. Bicycle wheel. Yeah. It's got an axis. It rotates. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> it's because we've been saying it so often. You can only associate it with Earth-based yeah, variety. <laughs> That's fair enough. Hence, hence the phrasing of the question. The reason it's got of the Earth-based variety on the end of it, Earth-shaped investigator, is because whenever Bloody Ranty was on the show... He would definitely come up. I'm not even going to repeat any of them. He'd definitely come up with some axial ro rotation examples <laughs> that weren't Earth based. Let's just put it that way. I used to do that. 
Don't come up with it anymore. I, I don't want this to start up new rude axial rotation examples, please. Earth-based variety always from now on. Let's. I'm just going to kill that dead straight away. Same goes for gravity. Scientific evidence only. Anybody got any? I'm looking at you, Discord. How about a bucket of sand? Bucket of sand is not scientific evidence of gravity. What? Gravity? What about just the word gravity? Or how, can you just do away with the word? It's kind of like in the lexicon now. Well, first we got to figure out what it is. <laughs> it, 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 it's just in there, but equals, nobody knows uh, what it actually is. Just can we, can, can weight, we right? just, equals weight. just let me just make a comparison, right? You kind of like saying, David, can we do away with donkeys? They're kind of in the farm now. <laughs> exactly. So you're saying, can we do away with a word that is firmly cemented in the lexicon? I just don't know how you're going to do it. Gravity means something. I mean, everybody understands that it means yeah, weight. It comes from gravitas, it. meaning weight. That's it. If I think about gravity, then I, it's, it means weight to me. Lovely. I, yeah, that, I just okay. said that. <laughs> the problem is the definition of it itself. So it might be a word in the lexicon, but we're trying to define it by asking for scientific validity to the assertions that follow from the word. So based on what people describe it as here on this debate, we're asking for scientific validity of the claims made about that word, gravity. So any scientific evidence of gravity. Hmm. No, I don't think so. Fair enough. Let's get something much more exciting. No, oh, wait, wait. I, I was. We're, we're gonna continue it for a short while. It's just like this gravity. Okay, so we know what it supposedly is, right? The bending of space time. What does it do? It bends space time. No, no, no. That's what causes it. I, I what can tell you. Let me give you the answer. Right. What does it do? Well, let me tell you what it does. It gives rise to a non-force force that you can think of as a force, but it's not actually a force called gravity. <laughs> that's what it does. I mean, that's what it does. That's <laughs> literally what their argument is. Yeah, but that's a description of what it's supposed to be doing, but what does it actually do? Oh, actually do. Where does it originate? Actually do. Where does oh, it nothing. originate? Actually meaning it's real. Actually, it doesn't do anything. It's a conceptual medium being bent, giving rise to a non-force force that you can think of as a force, but it's not actually a force called gravity. Well, it's not actually doing anything. It sounds like a lot like pseudoscience techno babble from Star Trek, really, when you put that all together. Exactly. I got a well, where where does what... gravity originate from? Where is gravity? the origination of it from? Where is it born at? Oh, but bending space-time. Oh, do you mean, oh, I see what you mean. Before before that, it was born in Einstein's mind. I... The thought experiment. But, I mean, where does it come from? If everything's pulling down, so... No, everything isn't it, pulling it, down. It, where does gravity come from? Einstein's mind. Einsteinian gravity doesn't do that. We don't know what it does. Yeah, we do. It gives rise... I've just told you three times. Yeah, but that's not a force. thing. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It gives rise it's to like a non-force force that you can think of as a force, but isn't actually a force called gravity. That's what. But it what does is. that do? That's not Nothing. a description of what it uh, actually Irwin. does. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> it's, it's, I covered this as well. The rat it's not. I covered this. Actually <laughs> doing <laughs> nothing. Nothing at all. That's what he's actually doing. Is gravity the reason why all the ballers are trying to reinvent what science is? Oh, no, yeah, that's a, they don't have it. No, that's a problem from pseudoscience pretender clan muppets such as astrophysicists. When they declare that they are doing science and then they just make up some story, often it proves to be fatally incorrect in many ways. So they have to change their story. That leaves them with a problem because the method they're claiming to have adhered to when they say they've done science is an empirical method. So when you get to the end of a result with that method... You don't have any take backs. There's no change in the story. You've got an empirical result. So anybody who's changing their story, it's kind of like in a courtroom. You know, the judge 
listens to you change your story as you go along and goes, hmm, bullshit artist. Yeah, well, pseudoscientists do that too. They just use the word science a lot. Exactly. And now, look how much their story is changing to the point where when this started, they used to assert all the time, oh, we have scientific evidence for a globe, right? Then Flat Earthers actually started asking for this evidence, and now it's, oh, science doesn't prove things because we found them out. You don't have scientific evidence for your globe. You don't have scientific evidence for gravity. How many people assert Cavendish is an scientific experiment proving gravity? It's not even an experiment. Let's start there first. So okay. what are we doing? Credit Whatever where credit's due. supposed to prove. Oh. If Einstein also from the center of Earth, right? Because everything is pulled to the center, then it's Earth. It's not a space-oriented uh, uh, force. It's an Earth-based force, right? So it radiates out. Is that the way it works? No, we've just told no, Arwen. Now I'm going to tell you. Or? Bending space-time, non-force force, giving rise to a force that's not actually a force that you can think of as a force called gravity. I've just told you. Anyway, kudos to Quantum Eraser. The reason yeah, we challenge Ball Earth religious tards with their validity with an adherence to the scientific method is because of Quantum Eraser. Nobody else. That's the sole reason we challenge them for their scientific evidence when they say that word. So props to Quantum Eraser. Yeah. And um, what do they say the spinning is caused by? I can't... I just don't remember or don't oh know. no worries i can I remind you it's caused by an affirming the consequent formal logical fallacy known as all right well no, it's when the big bang happens it just started spinning and stays spinning at speed yeah, <laughs> they, they presuppose earth rotation based on you presupposing that you travel antipode to yourself to observe star rotations right if you don't think about it. I like, I like the quiet mutterings after the concise summaries of their bullshit position. But they're my favourite thing on the show at the moment. Shout out to Winnie the Brew Bear. White Claw Money. That's uh, that's Owen Benjamin Beer, isn't it? White Claw. Uh, yeah. Hope the hope you redcoats have them. Redcoats? Cheeky swine. Take your money back. I don't want it. No, I'm only joking. Keep it coming. <laughs> Thank you for the super <laughs> chat, Winnie the Brew Bear. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's funny. He called you a red coat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I like it. It's funny. <laughs> In independence is just a myth. You're you're free to say that. It, it's just a concept. <laughs> you yeah. bend that independence. <laughs> The British could get their tea somewhere else. Wait, wait. You mean I can't buy five dollars worth of freedom? God damn it! <laughs> you can have a go at bending it though to give rise to a non-force currency. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you can do what you like with concepts. It's amazing. Uh, I love that I went on Facebook the other day and the quote that I read out a couple times. I'm starting to see it pop up all over the place. <laughs> it's awesome. That meme. Oh, was that was really good. What's the quote? I, we can, we do, we must consider Newtonian gravity as a force. Now, that, that doesn't mean it really is one, but we don't necessarily have to work at the really is level. Like Clinton. Classic. No, that's George sure. Musa. <laughs> that's George Musa. You, you need to stress the really is level. You don't have to work at the really is level yeah that's right yeah you have to bold that dude. we don't have to get real numbers. that's basically what he's saying yeah really is level is even better than saying we don't have to get real because that could almost be taken as slang we don't have exactly. to work at the really is level is so specific it leaves literally no weasel room <laughs> yeah it's great yeah it's kind of a euphemized expression, though. Instead of just saying, yeah. Getting real is. We're just going to imagine this. No, it's the really is. It's kind of like trying to hide it slightly so it doesn't sound so much like not real. 
Well, you can paraphrase it and go, well, rather than how he, he's... He even put the really is, when he said really is, he put the air quotes on it. Oh, yeah, nice. <laughs> I mean, come <laughs> no on. No way, did he do that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. To juxtapose what he's saying, they would prefer to work at the not really level. <laughs> Trust me, I rewound that like, a few times because I was just like, I don't believe what I'm hearing. Like, you really just said that we it's it's not something but it we could just pretend it really it, it, i mean it, i was i was at a loss for words i, I like and to people em- yeah. believe this i like to emphasize the you bit so <laughs> gravity is not yeah. a force but you and i'm pointing at you <laughs> i'm adding this in in square brackets i'm pointing at you fundies you can think of it as a force <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Good, good. Yeah, that really is level. Can you imagine a scientist saying that you, we don't really have to worry about what's going on at the really is level? What in the world? What a exactly. he's a priest. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. yep, yep. They're priests of a and, religion. And fight the flat earth for sitting there like, yes, yes, yes. Well, everything you're saying makes sense. Yeah, flat earth does that. No, what he's thinking is don't move an inch. Don't even blink. I've got to edit this later. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did. That's what he did. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Oh, God. You, yeah. yeah well, there, was an, there. there was a slight edit in that video, wasn't there? I remember yes, that there now, was. right? I caught it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah, because well, I had to go over it. How about defying gravity? Yeah, because I had to go over to 10 to 15 times because it didn't have a, a script, right? A transcript to it. So I had to I had to go over it over and over and over because sometimes you can't really hear what they're saying. And most people can't talk, can't enunciate. So I had to go over and over. And I looked up and I seen a little, little uh, flip, like a little clip on both sides. So, yeah, yeah. We're going to lose all this. Somebody should put this down. It, we should have like a, a, a memory card, right? Like a timeline. Man, I should have done that. If I'd have thought about it, I would have done it from the beginning. I've been saying this for months. You know, what's your problem? Where's the organization for these shows? Where's all the titles? I mean, God, if I have asked you once, I've asked you about a thousand times. But, you know, <laughs> we can't have these filing systems and basically everyone should blame QE. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love that. That's a, that's so. That's Did a Hillary Clinton video move. Yet? Did you was find that a Hillary a Clinton Hillary, move? You, yeah, it's a Hillary Clinton move. Remember we talked about that, where you blame somebody, you anticipate, and you blame somebody for what you do. <laughs> that's so like Hillary. The incoherent Hillary Clinton Academy of charging others with what you do, but if you anticipate it, it's even better. It's the Gaslighting Academy. Did she accuse somebody of destroying a load of emails? And destroy a load of emails? I can't remember. 33,000 of them. 33. 33,000. This is made up for, <laughs> this is made up for news, yeah, isn't it? Shit. Total made up number for news. Is that a non? It is a non. Hey, sexy boy. Hey, I apologize for putting that show out yesterday, but I had to do it. It, it, You won't see it again. It was just a one-off. That show is available to the public on Quantum Eraser channel. Be here or be sphere. It was the show with Slick and you, uh, all of us were all crazy. (laughs) Yeah, the one one where you forgot you were on. Slick. The one that he gave you the observed phenomenon for the quantum eraser experiment. Yeah, oh, you mean yeah, you remember anon? Hand wave diffraction? Remember anon, the one that you said, oh, I was never there. I can't remember that. Well, you remember it now. <laughs> I mean, you just said hey. you put, posted something yesterday, so I said, I don't know what you're talking about, but now I know what you're talking about. What are you talking oh, about? The, the observed channel. phenomenon being diffraction. Just the word. Did you what? subscribe yet? Sound light. Did you did you subscribe yet? Mm. <laughs> no, I didn't subscribe. I can't listen to you, man. <laughs> it's kind of annoying. 
So why do you come here or not? Skin. Come on. <laughs> this serious? show is more than just fucking what's his sack. Yeah, but he's here. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah but I'm not going to go subscribe and just listen to him for four hours, even though I try to listen to the Gravity one. Because, you know, Broken Clock is right twice a day. <laughs> With nobody strapping well you said. down to, to force you to listen to Quantum Eraser for hours straight, okay? Uh, uh, you can watch I it and then pause it when you're kind of sick of it and then continue watching when oh, you feel you can do it again. I, I forgot. I do have a Supernatural Bird's Nest episode. Hey, Anon, you're going to be on again. Don't worry. I'll send you a personal you? message. I'll send it to you. Hashtag, hashtag Anon Moto. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, boy. You're cool. Hey, did you figure out what, how they come up with wavelength yet? Hey, did you figure out what's waving? <laughs> no, that's a no. Hey, we just went over in the last show. We even time hacked it for you. Nice. Yeah. Hey, Nathan, did you tell him how you explained it to your mm -hmm. wife and she got it? Nathan. Hey, Jimbo's getting creepy in chat. Should I just ban him? Jimbo? Don't let me forget about this Nathan point. Looks like, you know, looks like there's no one behind the wheel here. Sorry, my mic had an issue. Uh, okay, did you explain to, to Anon uh, that you explained this to your wife last night, less than two minutes, and she got it? Yeah, she's you know, people, the they, they explain gravity to three-year-old and they pretend they got it, <laughs> you know? So that no, means that's... nothing. Oh, are you saying that wavelength is like gravity? No. Clown. <laughs> Clown. <laughs> oh, boy. You actually don't think before you speak, right? What is gravity? Clown. <laughs> what is gravity? Is that double D? Let me just answer David again. I've only said it three times to Arwen. This is, I believe, the third time to him. So it's the bending of a conceptual medium known as space-time that gives rise to a non-force force that you can think of as a force but isn't actually a force called gravity. That's what it is. Thank you. And what does that do? My, Dude, my favorite part of that on. is a non. Hold on, there's another new force. question. Hold force. on, hold on, hold on. A non moto non force. Hold on, there's a new question from Arwin. What does it do? Now, do you mean what does it conceptually do, or no. what does it actually do? What do you mean, Arwin? Well, you basically oh, define the concept and laid out the perimeter of it, then closed it off. So I'm just asking. So what does that do? actually do or conceptually do actually do oh uh, nothing it doesn't do anything at all in actuality it's the bending of mm. a conceptual medium for god's sake you can't do anything with that well i'm just wondering if there's ballers out there that actually disagree with that and i'd like to see their train of thought to support that argument no problem oh uh, no they just do... disagree they're not going to show it that's, that's okay we can, uh, hold on hold on we can lay out parameters no problem all I would require, it's not unreasonable to ask for this. I just need them to show me space time and then them bending it. That's all I'd need. <laughs> well, or if they could somehow first they have to turn it into a does fabric. cause something and point at that. Yeah, there's this there's claim of, of gravity. Oh, I didn't listen. Right? Or, I, I don't mind repeating that, myself. You either didn't listen to what I just said. Yeah, that's fine. They'd have to actually show me space time, and then mm. show me them bending it. That's what they'd need to but show. Hey, that's... Let, let, no, I know, but just I'm just just to play I'm... devil's advocate. Just to play, not that I agree with this bending nonsense. Just, just to play that. devil's advocate. They Arwen's can say, still trying hey, to get his words out though. Oxygen. I will promise we'll come to you next, Anon. Go on, Arwin. Right. So I've heard of claims mm. of the graviton particle supposedly so is that kind of the new approach to a physical tie-in with gravity derived from the einsteinian theory or does that really because it seems so completely separate from the whole newtonian idea of mass attracted by mass it's completely unrelated it just seems a new idea that is just 
that that is now supposed to be gravity, even though it doesn't even remotely relate to anything before that. I mean, no directionality on the world, no mass attracting mass, just something else. And it's a mystery what it does. Well, from what I understand, the effects of gravitons are extremely dangerous. So for all those people out there popping gravitons, don't take too many of them. They're extremely dangerous. You could create a black hole. They're not. They're, they're known as downers, by the way, gravitons. It's an would epidemic. You, would, do you believe in defying <laughs> gravity? Yeah, oh God. The bending of a conceptual medium known as space-time, which gives rise to a non-force force that you can think of as a force, but isn't actually a force, and it's called gravity. There you go. Fourth time for you. So if you could levitate, you would be defying gravity, right? There isn't any gravity. There's nothing they to defy. They would have to exist first. Hold on. His statement, to, to summarize his statement, if you could levitate, you could defy a non-force force that you can think of as a force but isn't actually a force. It's not actually a force. You don't need to defy it by levitating. Okay? So how come we can't float then? Oh my god. Oh my god. Kind of malformed question is this now? Doofus. It doesn't exist, Double D. Malformed question. But why would you think we, we would be floating? Hey, you could float in a swimming pool. Dallas, why would you think we would be floating? Well, clouds float. Are you a cloud? They're less dense. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. We will cloud are, clouds, are clouds defying gravity? No, there is no gravity. Oh, okay. Nothing's defying the oh, non-force. Fifth time. Listen to the ending. Well, have, Listen to the ending, well, David. Have, David. 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 Pressure, David. Not... David. David. Listen to the end statement. That you can think of as a force, but is not actually a force. Now that not actually a force bit means you don't need to defy it with anything. Okay. Oh, okay. Cool. Again. But uh, you got to remember, they think that gravity is controls all the gas pressure. Oh, well, they're wrong. Who, who cares what they think? They're just incorrect. What controls what controls the gas pressure then? That's a, a non malformed question. From the Mexican food last night. Hold on. I'm sick of these non sequiturs. Your original assertion, which is incorrect, has nothing to do with your question that followed. This is a malformed question again, David. Do you want to make a I'll claim? First of all, David, first make a claim. Now, make sure the claim is sensical and then back the claim. And then if there's any questions that come off the back of your claim that you've backed with cowbell then we may answer some questions. But start with a completely incorrect assertion and then start asking questions afterwards and it's going to get me annoyed really fast. I just said, how can you have gas pressure if you don't have gravity? Gravity, what? If we don't have something that doesn't do anything in the first instance, it makes no difference if we have it or we don't, David. But it seems me telling you five times that it's not actually a force means that you have to ask us why we have things if we don't have something that doesn't do anything. That's malformed, David. I know, but what's controlling? They ha they and, and back have to asking us something. Maybe okay. you'd like to make a statement that actually makes sense before questioning us on things. All right, everybody says there's gas pressure. They say that gravity holds this gas pressure in. If it's no, not gravity, what no, is it? No, that's the same thing I just demolished. Everybody says there's gas pressure. No. Often, people don't declare that there's gas pressure because they couldn't give a shit. But there is gas pressure, sod all to do with the appeal to consensus in your first statement. Should we go on pulling this crap apart? I'm t why am I having to educate you on formulating sensible statements? Four more I'm hours. 
I'm just saying that they have a reason why their the gas pressure stays on the Earth and it's no, they, gravity. No, they don't. Sixth time. Uh -huh. It is not a force. It's not holding gas pressure. It's a conceptual medium. What parts aren't sinking in? You telling me, you David, you telling me what other retard fundamentalists have told you what they say is inconsequential here. That is not what gravity can do. It's not what it is doing. And it's not an argument we even need to address. Because it's, pr in principle... The fundamental premise the questions you're asking are based on are wrong. But you believe in gas pressure, so how can this... Uh, so did you that, say that you was, believe in you gas pressure? I, I, I just smashed this. It just does It seems like the wankers who come here, right? They don't listen to the rebuttal. So I've already clarified that your first statement was an appeal to consensus. And it matters not whether or not people declare... Now, you've taken that appeal to consensus and put it on me, even though I've already taken it apart before you've made that claim. See, I'm smarter than you, David. So before you put your appeal to consensus on me, like it's me that says we have gas pressure, yeah, I already addressed it before you got there. But you still used it because you were too slow to recognise that I'd already caught you out before you even knew what you were going to do. I'm sorry, we hadn't even got the gas pressure on the house. Yeah, you've just asserted that I believe in gas pressure, taking your appeal to consensus that I demolished earlier when I said, no, 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 people don't say we have gas pressure. Some people don't even care and never say those words. But we do have gas pressure. Now, I know that's me saying we have gas pressure, but it's an absolute fact. Easy to demonstrate Easy to get people like you who think we don't have gas pressure to concede when they make vacuums. So, no, we do have gas pressure. It's not going to be put on to me like it's something I say and therefore can be debunked. It isn't. We do have gas pressure. It doesn't need to be undone by a non-force that you seem to want to argue about, David, the flat earther, apparently. All right, well, how, how do you measure gas pressure in the atmosphere then? A barometer. Oh. Uh, in, the, in, a again, barometer, in a barometer has a vacuum in it, right? No, no. Say we're not going down this road again. No, we're not going no, down no. here, David. Hey, double D. We're, no, oh, no, no. Question, don't take the bait. I've got rid of him. He's not part the of the conversation. Is, That's it. The That's the end of the conversation. Is, he circle jerked us back to barometers, something from what yeah. is now, I think it's about two months ago, when he first came in with this crap. Like we haven't heard it, David. Sling your hook. Go away. Well, um... Nathan, so, since Kosher is here, uh, can I ask Kosher a question? That gives me an opportunity to make a coffee. <laughs> Very handy. <laughs> yeah. So much Kosher, rather Coriolis than gas pressures right now. <laughs> can you hear us, Kosher? Do I need to unmute him or something? I don't know if he's he muted. Be or not. No, no, he's off mute. He's, he, mic's all yours. Go ahead, Co ask Kosher away if he's unless he's away from his mic, but he's capable of talking. All right. So, um, the Kosher's example yesterday of tangential velocity being the reason why helicopters, um, you know, stay in the same location when they're hovering, is that based off of uh, Newton's first laws? And in particular, Newton's laws of motion. Is that what that example was based on? Hey, hey, yeah, Babs, it's uh, Newton's laws of motion and also Galileo's principle of uh, relativity. So okay. it's in the same reference frame. It's a, it's a, it's a, the reference frame is spinning. Everything on the Earth is going to be moving with it in that in its um, rotation. And so whatever speed the earth is doing at whatever place, everything that's there is going to be doing that speed as well. That's correct. Okay. So um, according to Newton's first law, it states that every object will, will remain at rest or in uniform motion in a straight line unless compelled to change its state by the action of that's an right. external force. That's right. So would a helicopter flying be an external force? 
No, if a helicopter was at rest on the Earth, then it's technically not at rest at all, but that's not it. It's still in the reference frame of the Earth. And so as long as the Earth continues to spin, it's going to continue to be at rest in reference to the Earth. Yeah. It's at rest, but it's also at motion with the Earth. Yeah. Because the Earth is moving. So depending on how you're discussing it, it's going to remain in whichever one you're talking about. If you're talking about the outside reference frame, um, the non-inertial re reference frame, and yeah, you're right. It's going to remain in motion. The outside like that. isn't the non-inertial reference, reference frame. frame. You're remain at rest. You're all the, the outside reference. What's the outside reference frame? Uh, you could be anywhere. Anything outside the Earth spinning. Like what? Oh, uh, like uh, from uh, the sun, or somewhere <laughs> in some spaceship. <laughs> Oh yeah. my gosh. So, so the helicopter out. taking off is not an external force. Uh yeah, it is a get... force, absolutely. It's gotta use lift. Lift is a force. So if an external force is being applied to that helicopter, um why is it maintaining tangential velocity? Because according to Newton's law, an object is gonna remain in motion unless an external force acts upon it. Yep. So the way that the principle of relativity, which is the first one we went to, when you're talking about motion, you have, you have to describe it in reference to something else. So there's always reference frames. There's always um, uh, one object that you're uh, going to focus on staying still. So even though okay, it's not so staying still, you have, to, you have to use it as a reference frame in order to, okay. to move around. Okay. Okay. So the helicopter the, list of, hold on a second. Earth. List of reference frames with his example. You have the Earth, you have the atmosphere, and you have the helicopter, and you have birds and bees and syrup. Go ahead and list the reference frames in his in his example, please. Sir, the syrup is good. We'll just stick with that one. No, it's the Earth. The Earth is a reference frame. The rotating Earth. Anything out completely outside of the Earth would be a different one. Whee. So there's no Coriolis <laughs> effect on the yeah. Earth then. No, there is. We went through this yesterday. I'm not playing this game with you guys, but um, Babs had a question, so I thought. Yeah. Oh, when you say uh, I'm not, I'm completely not outside of the earth, earth. Oh, you're, you're, you're fine. What do we That's mean what I said, by Babs. That? Babs, you're cool. Go ahead, chocolate. Well, when you say outside of the earth, what do you mean by that? Well, I'm gonna Go show. assume you know what that means, but. We can pretend. No, I'm trying don't. to um, understand what you from, mean from when you say that. Outside. Though, yeah, I use two examples, like the sun or the the a spaceship, for instance. As long as you're outside what? of the Earth, the sun watching, or a spaceship. What? Not okay, so about? a helicopter hovering at a hundred feet. That's not out of yeah. It's the still, Earth, still in. Right? So it's still in within Earth's reference frame. That's right. Yeah, which so would where be the not, which would be the non-inertial reference frame. Give us right? the limits of the Earth's reference frame. Well, it's not it's not being influenced by the Earth. It's not being influenced directly by the Earth. No, so, give us so the then limits. It's not give in us the, the Earth's reference Hold on frame. A second, chocolate. Sorry. Give Go. us the limits of the Earth's reference frame. That means how high up does the Earth's reference frame Go in the atmosphere, and where does it stop? There's not a height or something. It's exactly as I said it. If it's being influenced by the Earth's spin, then it's in the Earth's reference frame. Then it's that using the Earth as a stationary question. object. That didn't answer my question. Give me the limits of the Earth's reference frame. I just did, Quantum Eraser. I'm no, not you didn't. Give us the limits. No, of you the want you want a value. The answer is doesn't come in a value, and I'm sorry that you that you, you can't help that, but that's just well, the way Koso, it is. These are the your words that you're, you're that's, using. That's the limits of of the um. If you didn't give me the limits. I need a distance, stops. a distance formula. That's okay. Well, that's there's no, there's not one. So <laughs> there's that. If it's, what? It's an inertial, it's an inertial <laughs> reference frame. The, the Earth is rotating. If you're part of that rotating, rotating with the Earth, you can move it. Use it as a okay, object. Okay. All right. H hang on. Hang on. Hang on, everyone. A moment. Of the Earth's you reference see, frame this, right now. The the we reference the frame thing. Of the Earth's uh, hold on, John. Frame. Hold on. I'll do this for a second. Go ahead, Earth Check University.
Yeah, you see, this whole reference frame thing is same as like the end body gravitational problem. You can't just, I mean, it doesn't make sense to just oversimplify everything to say you have one reference frame or two reference frames. Because, yes, just like you have all the different particles and objects interacting with each other, what is the reference frame at each layer? Like, as quantum rays is suggesting, what's the reference frame of bees? of clouds and then if you go up in a spaceship at what point do you leave um you know the earth's reference frame even though you still have the earth's rotating inertia you're still subject to its gravity i mean it, it's just a totally grotesque oversimplification in my understanding okay let's use the syrup then as quantum racers had suggested first of all babs asked me a specific question i gave him a specific answer we're talking about the earth's rotation we're not talking about bees and we're not talking about syrup Okay. Oh, if you were God. the B, you would still be on the rotational. Um, uh, you'd still be in the reference frame of the Earth. If you were some flowing Wait, syrup, you'd still be in the oh, reference frame of the Earth. Hold on. Go ahead. Uh, okay, but sure. then it can only have two reference frames, in my opinion, because then you can you can't say that everything that is close to the Earth, even if let's say we give it anything that's fifty miles within the fifty miles height from the surface of the Earth, is in the reference frame of the Earth. That, that just doesn't really make sense because then it, it's not like a rigid object. It's considered f they're fluid, they're soft body uh, physics interactions. It's not That's rigid exactly, body physics where exactly everything's just one. Value. Wow. Yeah, so it, it's, it's even hard to define because it's not all just <laughs> one rigid object. Yeah, I didn't give him value for that reason. If you're talking about the reference frame of the Earth, then that's where, that's where you have it. When it's being, when it's on the Earth. If you were so, talking about so some other no question, which wasn't oh, asked, chocolate. like if someone was in a spacecraft or an airplane, and you're talking about in the realm of that airplane, um, you know, you could use that as a reference frame for some reason. So but it depends on the question. So, so is the airplane in the same reference frame as the Earth? You, yeah, the would airplane would be in the reference frame of the Earth. But if you were talking about the question, were uh, talking about being on the airplane, and the airplane wasn't leaving the Earth then you can define the reference frame you're talking about as airplane. It depends on the question. It depends on what you're working on. Okay, so the airplane that's flying, is that in the same reference frame as the Earth? Yes. But then Zanik was claiming um, a month back or so that there is Coriolis for airplanes, and that's why there is slightly different times, and that's the explanation uh, 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 for hurricanes or something as just well. To, just to make is. that a bit more concise. There is sorry sorry, sorry to interrupt, Kosho. So there is no Coriolis no, I'm effect. I'm not playing this game. I, Babs asked one question. And uh, yeah, I'm making a summary for my audience, and I'll do as I damn well please. So according to Kosho, the plane is in the same reference frame. To have Coriolis, you need them to be in separate reference frames. So Kosho's now fighting for there being no Coriolis effect on Earth. And what Earth-shaped investigator is asking is why Zanik would argue that Earth does have Coriolis effect. So your position is currently that the same reference frame and there is no Coriolis effect. Just for the audience's clarity, Kosho's arguing for no Coriolis effect. Just so it's clear, Kosho, you don't have to like it, you fundy. It's not what he said, but okay. <laughs> I would, I would really like to know at what point does something move out of Earth's non-inertial reference frame? What, to have Where Coriolis? That's a good question. Given that Kosho is stating a situation that will not give him Coriolis, what situations give us Coriolis then if they're both the same reference frame, Kosho? Because you're saying we don't have Coriolis effect. Interesting that the globe says they do, and you're saying we don't. Clearly you're wrong, as that's not what the globe rhetoric is. So you're stupid and don't understand your own religion because you're fighting for no Coriolis at the moment, son. Mike, disciplined people. Can I can I say something? Um, wouldn't it, if any, if an object is What is that noise? Somebody point, making some We noise. can't hear you. Uh, yeah, I think maybe mute their you mic. might have to mute Brian. It's on Discord. Mute Brian a bit. Brian, I think you've got some background noise. You're not talking. Try to stay on mute. I'd like For a response from Kosho. Uh, I'd like to know why, given that globe earth rhetoric is that you do have Coriolis, separate reference frames for the aeroplane and ground, why he, given that he believes the earth is a spinning sphere, would be arguing for them being the same reference frame. I'd like an answer to that, given that earth-shaped investigator has led you here so beautifully. 
You're not no, getting I'm one, Nathan. Not I don't see anymore. him in there. You're not getting an answer, Nathan. He's not here. I Why is he run away? He's gone because he's not here. He's run away? He's yeah, because this is the point where he's made a declaration that there's no Coriolis. They're the same reference frame. Now, the necessary ingredients to have Coriolis effect is two reference frames. But Earth-shaped investigator beautifully led him to the point where he declared that they're only one. So what's he done? He's run away, the little bitch. That's what he's done. Because he knows he's absolutely screwed. He's fighting for no Coriolis like George. Hey, George. Yeah? Maybe you'd like to have a little discussion with me where you don't get to rumpus the crap out of me. And I get to point out, like with Kosho, that you seem to be arguing for there being no Coriolis with Earth and atmosphere travelling as one. Now, don't you, George? Yeah? That's why I say you're senile and you're never going to get to sue me for slander. Because demonstrable senility, that would be someone declaring Earth and atmosphere travel as one. When the globe rhetoric is that they're travelling separately to give you a Coriolis effect, George. You senile old bastard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's a schmuck. He's senile. Clearly, he thinks that atmosphere can travel along with Earth. I mean, that's clearly a demonstration of senility. The guy needs committing. Gas yep. doesn't behave like that, George. We've got different directions of surface winds. He just talked through me when I was trying to explain this to him. That's what senile people do. They don't have the ability to listen and process information when they get old. Like an old dog. You know the saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. That's George. It won't sink in that he's wrong. And he's fighting for having no Coriolis when he says Earth and atmosphere travel as one. I thought they do have Coriolis on your globe religion, George. Why would you be fighting for there being not any Coriolis with the one reference frame? Travelling as one, one reference frame, like the Point Coast show just ran away. That's interesting. Why would he run away when we're pointing out that he's demonstrating no Coriolis in this retention of the angular velocity as it moves off the reference frame that's supposed to be giving him Coriolis. Interesting, that'd be the point he ran away, wouldn't it, George? Same point that you rumpus the crap out of me on uh, on Ranty's show. Because this is devastating. They must talk over it and obfuscate it or run away when we hold their toes to the fire like cowards. Because George and Kosho are arguing that they've only got one reference frame. And to have Coriolis effect... They need that plane to leave the non-inertial reference frame and enter the inertial reference frame to demonstrate the Coriolis effect. But what's he arguing for? Them travelling together? Ah, uh, senility, it's a cruel thing. The other problem with being senile and being on YouTube is that you poison people like Kosho into the same retarded nonsense. You know, he's just foolish. You're senile, George. Are you talking about what George did on the show the other day that Ranty is not giving up the video for? <laughs> Are you talking? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, George had a bit of a moment. Rather than listen to me explaining that his assertion that the Earth and atmosphere travel as one is debunked by multiple surface winds, George chose to have a shave. Now, obviously, this is more demonstration of senility. But what can you do? You know, that was his reaction. Rather than listen, pretend he's performing his uh, his bodily functions of a morning like that. That was his reaction. Crazy. But that that's yeah. what we're trying to detail so to actually, the audience and the people who actually, believe him. Did he actually shave on the video? Yes, yes, he did, yes. No way! No, I'm not joking, no. He ho he hid often sticking his head out of camera when I got to talk so that he could just ignore what I said when he popped back into view. Okay. Um, shaved what? Is that the one that Ranty won't... Is that the <laughs> video that Ranty won't give up? Yeah, uh, <laughs> look, I'm not Ranty. You can't appeal to me in this regard. I know Ranty, what you're doing. Ranty, guess what? I have that video now. No thanks to you, sir. But I got it. Ranty's video. Ah! Uh, right. Only this morning I was pointing out to Ranty that within a very short period of time you've become a proper YouTuber. You're a force to be reckoned with. He'll need shout outs from you soon. He needs to keep you on side. He needs to stop pissing you off. All this kind of stuff. I also highlighted that I say similar things to you about Ranty. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless... Please, for the love of Christ, do not enter into this where you end up with Ranty giving you a copyright strike or something. Please, God, don't let this descend. No, no, no. I won't. I won't. I'm just messing with him. <laughs> but that, yeah, yeah. I'm just messing with him. But, but Georgie, I'll tell you what, boy. And he's going back on for another video? Are you, uh, Nathan, will you be around? Oh, no. The guy sickens me. 
I mean, I got my wife coming in going, look, if you continue shouting at midnight, I'm going to divorce you. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even kidding, though. That's pretty much verbatim what she said to me because she was pissed off at midnight while I'm getting all emotional about George because he's left, he's left an impression because of Brian Mullen, you know. And uh, Brian Mullen's invested time in his career path. He's had the... Uh, courage to step forward about something that's blatantly incorrect, a lie we're being told. In fact, the biggest deception in mankind's history. And he's prepared to step up on a pedestal, and then some senile old bastard comes along and says, I'm going to destroy this man's career because, why? I don't understand how Coriolis works. So, essentially, Brian Mullen's detailing what we detail here about Coriolis effect. The plane journey would be reduced in duration if the Earth spins underneath. In order for there to be a Coriolis effect, Earth spins underneath. Now, George is asserting that Earth doesn't spin underneath. They, it travels with the atmosphere, flying in the face of Coriolis, the thing that Brian Mullen got absolutely correct in his assertions of what is required for Coriolis and what is not demonstrable on Earth to have Coriolis. George didn't understand and attacked the man by going after the person who supplied him with a license to do his job, something he undoubtedly yep. invested heavily in to progress his career, his family, his general well-being in life. So some old git in the last years of his life going after a young man's career, I, I can feel it now, my blood is starting to boil. Yeah. And that's what yep. I... Yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, no, yeah, yeah, I feel it, yeah. And we, I, somebody told me that he was denying that. Yeah, he still denies okay. it. No, I didn't, you've got it all wrong, that kind of thing. When we had him on the show and exposed him, he's finished. He's a liar a as well. That's but that's how these people behave. They are disgusting human beings, and you know I find most of their behaviour abhorrent just in the debate, let alone in the in regards to how they will treat people in their actual lives. You know, destroy another man's career. And John summed it up on another show. He's like, you know, he doesn't have to contact him and tell him that he's gone out killing people. He just has to contact him and go, "Do you know this guy Brian Mullen?" Oh yeah. That's all he needs to do to destroy yeah. the man's career. He knows yeah. it. We know it. He can pass it off like, oh, well, I only contacted him about this, that, and the other. Yeah, you contacted yeah. him about it. Nathan. Him. Sorry, Babs. Nathan, go on. what? Round out. I just want to. He placed a seed of suspicion. Before you round out, I just want to ask a quick question here. Um, did Kosher actually answer my question? No, he ran away. When I asked um, if the helicopter is in motion. If the helicopter is in motion while it's on Earth, and the helicopter's engine causes that helicopter to hover, isn't that an external force acting upon it? So it, w it wouldn't maintain Earth's tangential velocity if it has an external force acting upon it, according to Newton's laws of motion. I'm pretty sure he's quite keen to answer your question. The problem was that I stepped in and pointed out that in order for you to be asking that question, he would need to be arguing for us having no Coriolis effect, which is absolutely the case, because you're saying, oh, well, the other day Zanuck explained that planes do deviate. They do have the Earth rotating underneath, right? Well, you're saying your position, Zanuck, uh, 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 Kosho, no. is Earth no, isn't no, rotating no, no. underneath. No, no, no. So we have the reference frame, the anonymous reference frame. Shut up, Zanuck. I'm going to concisely summarise it again, thanks to the fundy obfuscation that came right at the end of my conclusion. I was 99% there as well, Zanik. But thank you for interrupting the end of my conclusion with a no, 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 when we weren't talking about you specifically. You assert, as the fundy rhetoric of the globe is in effect right now, Coriolis is in effect on Earth. Therefore, two reference frames. Therefore, Earth rotating underneath. Like you on a roundabout with a drone. You rotate underneath it. It's as simple as that. That's what gives you Coriolis. Now... Your wingman that you tried to defend moments ago asserted that it retains the tangential velocity. It goes along with Earth, along with the atmosphere. It's not deviating. No Coriolis effect. And when I absolutely pointed out how absurd it is that he would take a stance against Coriolis with Earth and atmosphere travelling as one or tangential velocity retention, he's saying there is no Coriolis. And that's where he ran away, Zanik. Let me explain. There is two and there, there's two reference frames that we're talking. There is about. two reference frames. What Earth spins underneath the inertial reference frame? Do, do, do oh, want, someone's muttered it. Old, I clarify it nice and clearly and loud, and then they go silent. 
So I there was two you, ref I who was I just talking sorry, to? Who, sorry, not you, Zanik. Someone else Thank just declared. Zanik, not you. Someone else you stepped up to the mic. Who was that? So, so so Zanik, I'm going to shut your mic down completely thing. unless you let the person who just made a declaration. It was, it was the Wardy. Uh, hey, hey, hey. So we oh, have two oh, reference wordy. frames. Wardy. Hey, let's be nice to the Wardy. Wardy's nice. Yeah, yeah. So we have two reference frames, my friend. Yeah. Earth spinning underneath the inertial reference frame. Correct? Uh, yeah, sure. No, not sure. If Earth span underneath an aeroplane, a flight from Charlotte, North Carolina, typically about four, and a, four or four and a half hours, would take an hour and a half because Earth was spinning underneath, my friend. So no, not if you like. Not at all. Earth doesn't spin underneath. There is no observable Coriolis effect. There is no shortened durations when flying west. So no, Earth isn't spinning. Do you want an explanation or do you just want to continue? Your what, an explanation for why there is no demonstrable Coriolis effect? Maybe you'd like to tell us about the situation that will give rise to no Coriolis effect like George Netanyuk and tell us how Earth and atmosphere travel as one. Maybe that would be your explanation for why we don't observe that Coriolis effect that you're now trying to argue for by explaining away why we don't see it. Or maybe a long protracted silence is what we need. While well, I point out again that to have Coriolis, you'd need the Earth rotating underneath balls, like asserted by Neil deGrasse Tyson, like underneath bullets, as asserted by George Netanyuk, like underneath planes, like asserted by Zanuck, and the citation provided by Kosho. You'd need it rotating underneath and having a shortened duration when flying west because the Earth rotates underneath. My bad, it doesn't. We don't observe the Earth rotating underneath. Earth doesn't rotate. Are you finished? No, Over. your globe religion is, though. Can someone unmute Zanuck so that he can continue his explanation? <laughs> Why, you were the one. You said we've got two reference frames. That was your gambit that you muttered. And I got clarity. Two reference frames. Earth rotating underneath then, Sunshine. Let's stay here now. You've just tried to pass the baton to Zanuck. So you declared two reference frames. One of those would be Earth rotating un underneath, wouldn't it, my friend? If you like. Right? Coriolis force ex exists Do you not remember the if you like bit? It rotates with a constant angular velocity to the reference frame. Yeah, underneath. Yeah, the reference frame being the inertial reference frame that the plane's travelling through, and you're now saying Earth rotates underneath that oh, inertial reference again, frame. If you're just going to talk through me, I'll go quiet again. You, I just clarified your position. Tangential velocity of the Earth rotating underneath an aeroplane. That's what I'm clarifying. Two reference frames, your fundamentalist religious position. I'm summarising it. You can't summarise four words, Nathan. I only need <laughs> what? I only I only need two. <coughs> Reference frames. Hello. Hey, again, over. Andy. Yeah, you say Am we've I got two of them. You Nathan say we've got two. Me again. Oh, there he goes. There we go. No, it was a long so pause. Stop. I started talking and then you came on talking through you after a long sodding pause. <laughs> Over. Da -da. Just want to point out that was a five second pause with me clarifying that you had air to talk by saying over. So I'm not talking through you, fundamentalist religious zealot, who's just asserted we have two reference frames, one of which would be the earth turning underneath an aeroplane. You want to go from there? Maybe tell me I'm talking through you when I now give you absolute free reign to justify that horse shit. Over. Okay, define a reference frame. A frame that you will reference things in. The clues in the title. Okay, fine. So the frame that we're referencing things in is Earth, is it not? That would be the non-inertial reference frame. That's one of them. Where is the other Fine. one? Define the inertial reference frame. 
that would be the space you go into when you leave the non-inertial reference frame. For example, yeah. you hold a drone in your hand. It spins with you on the non-inertial reference frame. Upon leaving the spinning non-inertial reference frame, it enters the inertial reference frame. Is that clear? Right. The Coriolis force exists in a frame that rotates with a constant angular velocity to a reference frame. It's a separate frame. That's nice. And? Right. So where is the other one? Hold on. And? What do you mean, and? And? <laughs> What's your conclusion? And we have two reference frames on Earth with a plane in the inertial reference frame and Earth spinning underneath, as you've declared when you said we do have two reference frames. You spent the last hour claiming that because there's only one reference frame, there's no possible way that Coriolis can exist. No. That's your position! Uh, sorry, that would be your <laughs> position and George's position and Kosho's position when you claim that the Earth and the item leaving the non-inertial reference frame retains the speed and, for some reason, the direction it's spinning in. I don't really know how that works. Oh, it doesn't work. But that's what they're claiming. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. A non-Coriolis effect by having them as one reference frame. That would be our pointing out their position that contradicts having a Coriolis effect. You're taking the standard fundamentalist globe line as portrayed by Neil deGrasse Tyson. You're saying there's two reference frames. And like with the roundabout, when you leave the non-inertial reference frame in, say, mm, an aeroplane, the person who remains on the non-inertial reference frame would see the plane deviating. Not because it's actually curving, it's travelling in a straight line but the earth rotates underneath. Now that's your position, the right yeah. position, the correct bullshit. We just rip that bullshit to pieces by pointing out that you'd have shortened durations of flights if the earth was rotating underneath to generate a Coriolis effect. Comprende ese? No, you wouldn't. <laughs> You've still got to travel the same distance. <laughs> There's some Mama very persistent cognitive dissonance going on here, Nathan. You're not you're ridiculous. not leaving the non-inertial reference frame when you get into the the sky. You're oh well then you're not having any Coriolis effect, you complete moron. In order to generate yes. a Coriolis so, effect, you must leave the non-inertial reference frame. This is really so, simple. Coriolis uh, uh, isn't complicated. To have Coriolis, don't interrupt me. To have Coriolis, you must leave the non-inertial reference frame. So it seems that you're saying you don't. Well, then what? One reference frame, unlike your claim of two? Oh, it seems you've got some fundamental retardedness going on, friend. This you're arguing for two thing. reference frames. Can, can you're I saying you don't the leave the first? I Kosho before. You're saying At you don't leave point? the first. You, you, you're here to argue for two reference frames, Bonehead. Why are you now yeah. arguing that you stay in the first when you're trying to argue that we've got two? Seems you don't understand because Coriolis do very well. To. For Coriolis, you have two. But when you're talking about flights, it's a different thing altogether. Oh, well, then, if we're not okay. talking about having two reference frames when we talk about flights, we're not talking about having Coriolis, are we? So it seems like Kosho and George... You're arguing for us not having Coriolis. You don't leave the non-inertial reference frame. Then you don't have Coriolis. Hello? If you say so. If you don't leave, you don't have Coriolis. What part of this aren't you getting? You're here, stupid person, to argue that you do have two reference frames. So why on God's green earth are you now telling me about how you don't leave the first one when that's precisely what must happen to have Coriolis? 
because it happens in the non-inertial reference frame that you don't leave. What happens? You, no, 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 <laughs> no, you don't get Coriolis, Coriolis in the non-inertial reference frame. No, it's leaving the non-inertial reference frame that... Why, why am I going? This is the sixth time. I've said it six times. I was trying to ask Kosho before. Hold on, hold on. I want to ask him something. I feel oh, like this is no, in you, you can, but you can ask it in the after yeah. show. So with that, I'm going to say a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of you who tuned in live on the Nathan Oakley live stream. But if you are watching this on Nathan Oakley 1980, then stay tuned as there will be an after show to follow. A massive thank you to all of today's debating panel for making this live show possible. Of course, a massive thank you to all of you for tuning in, smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing. I think there was actually one extra super chat that I didn't read out. So a massive shout out to Earth is Seriously Flat, who says, Nathan Oakley, the best glob globe zombie slayer on our flat Earth. Well, I'm sure that's not necessarily the case. QE is uh, a monster. So, yes, a massive thank you for smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, and all that good stuff. Be sure to check out NathanOakley.com and the Flat Earth Debate Forum to keep up to date with the community debate. I've been Nathan Oakley. Stay tuned if you're watching on Nathan Oakley 1980, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! It actually, I was showing it on, on there. When the guy's holding onto the object, it's moving with the non-inertial reference frame. As soon as he moves the object, it goes into the inertial reference frame, causing the Coriolis effect. It's a very right. easy demonstration. You've got to leave it. You've got to leave the non -inertial. If I'm holding a drone on a roundabout, and it's in my hand, it's part of the non-inertial reference frame spinning with me. Now, their argument in this instance is to say, the drone takes off from your hand... And it still stays an inch above your hand as you rotate. So what you're saying is That's you don't see it deviate. This works. So they're saying you don't see it deviate. It just stays above your hand because it's retained the velocity of the roundabout when it took off. So you don't see it deviate. It just looks like it's staying above your hand. What the fuck? That's the non-Coriolis effect. The whole point of Coriolis is it leaves your hand and seems like it's curving away from you. It's not. It's just going up. But it seems that way because you're rotating underneath. That's what gives you Coriolis. But they say, oh, the plane retains the velocity. So it's analogous to the drone taking off and not seeming to fly away from you because you rotate away from it. No, no, no. It just stays above your hand. It retains the velocity at the roundabout. They're just essentially one reference frame. What, what, well, that's no Coriolis, even if that was possible, which it isn't. So this is the biggest pile of double-speaking horse crap you can ever have. And the people who say, no, we do have two reference frames, will then go on, like this asshole, to argue that we've actually only got one and it's retaining the velocity. Even though he's come on to absolutely and explicitly argue that we've got two reference frames. He'll argue all day about how we only see one reference frame, and it stays in the reference frame, and it doesn't leave the reference frame. No Coriolis then, bonehead. Uh. Can we let Zanuck lose? Uh, I would love to know how high you would have to go to leave the non-inertial reference frame. That was my next question. I was going to ask, so when do we leave that reference let, frame? Let, let me ask you this then, both of you. When you've got your drone in your hand on the roundabout, yeah, assuming that the motor's spinning, so you're holding on to it, so it's trying to take off, but you're keeping hold of the bottom skids or whatever they call them on your little drone. Yeah? Now... When you let go, how high does it need to go to leave your hand? Is it a millimetre? Or is it, it's got to be a foot above your hand before you'll see Coriolis? Or will the as soon as it leaves your hand. The second it leaves your hand. So to have Coriolis effect on a roundabout, it's not uh, uh, dependent on how quickly the ball leaves your hand. The bit that gives you the Coriolis, is it leaving the non-inertial reference frame? The second it leaves it, you experience an apparent deviation. The moment it leaves your hand. So the moment the plane takes wrong, off, Nathan, the moment the helicopter... The why is Fundy, example. why is Fundy asshole rumpusing me? So the moment the helicopter leaves... Wrong. You don't leave the reference frame with Coriolis. Then there's no Coriolis, the you idiot. How many times does it need to be said? So you don't leave 
the non-inertial reference frame to, to experience Coriolis. Okay, I'm on my roundabout with my drone and it's in my hand. I'm not letting go. In other words, it's not leaving the Coriolis, uh, not leaving the reference frame. I I'm, don't seem to be experiencing any Coriolis, mate. It's just in my hand rotating with me. What's what gives? No, it doesn't have to leave. It doesn't have to leave. It's in my hand. It's not left. And I'm not experiencing Coriolis because it hasn't left yet. At what point do you think I will experience Coriolis? You complete dumbo. Would it be the point that it leaves? Because it's not. I'm, I'm ask you again. Let's see if he ignores me completely. I'm holding on to a drone. It's powered. It's it's trying to fly, but I'm holding it, stopping it. It's not leaving. Like you've just declared, it doesn't need to leave to experience Coriolis. So it's not leaving. I'm holding it. But I definitely aren't experiencing any apparent deviation. It's just in my hand with me. So what the hell are you talking about? It doesn't have to leave the non-inertial reference frame and enter the second inertial reference frame to experience Coriolis. It can stay on the first reference frame, can it? You complete retard. You bonehead. You idiot. You fundamental fucktard. No. If it's still in my hand, I'm definitely not experiencing any apparent Coriolis effect. Okay? The second frame is inside the first. You're not leaving the first reference frame when you... Yeah, I've said that. It's still in my hand. It's still in the Dude, first reference frame and it's not, not deviating. When you let go of the, the drone... Initial. Oh, when I let go of the drone, it leaves the first reference frame! In that example... Yeah, in an example that gives you Coriolis effect. Yeah, that's right, stupid idiot. Yeah, in my example, it will give you a Coriolis effect. In your example, where it doesn't leave the first reference frame, you don't get Coriolis effect. Define non-inertial reference. Yeah, the spinning yeah, reference the frame one that you're going to leave. Yeah, the spinning one that you're going to leave in order to enter the inertial reference frame, giving rise to an apparent deviation. You'd have to leave in order to spin underneath it. You're not going to spin underneath it if it's still in your hand. Hey, gringo, comprende, so eh? Hard. What's your problem? It's not leaving your hand, therefore not deviating. Upon leaving your hand, entering the second reference frame, leaving the non-inertial spinning reference frame, definitely leaving it, that's when you get Coriolis effect, the apparent deviation. Upon leaving your hand, the drone, or leaving the ground, your plane. If we had Coriolis right. on Earth... So the non-inertial reference frame is... Is, is what? what? <laughs> it's the first reference frame. The this is the thing you're not understanding. in your religion. This is the thing you're not understanding. Hey, asshole, don't start a statement with this is the thing you're not understanding when at an absolute fundamental level you're having your ass handed to you by me. I understand this concept. You don't. So this is because you don't understand that I'm getting more and more pissed off no. with you. It's because you are thick. So don't start your statement with this is because you don't understand. I absolutely understand from the man who's given us you don't have to leave the non-inertial reference frame to have Coriolis. Three times I've exampled something not leaving and not giving Coriolis, demolishing your point, and now you start your statement with it's because I don't understand. No. How dare you? You are retarded. You don't understand. I'm having to school you like I schooled so many other globehead retards. Just like you. Arrogant. Thinks he knows. Doesn't know. But will tell me I don't understand. You must leave the non-inertial reference frame to have Coriolis. You declared otherwise because you are stupid. Do you get me, dick? Never ever start another statement with because I don't understand when you're demonstrably retarded. Let me, let Nathan, me help you with could something you here. please present me in the meantime? First usually you loses the argument because their point is lost in their frustration. My point's not lost. My point is you need to leave the non-inertial reference frame to have Coriolis. Fundamentalist religious zealots like George Netanyuk, this guy, now it's been pointed out that having two reference frames would shorten durations of flight, is arguing that we only have one and you don't need to leave it. I assure you my point is not being lost in my frustration. It's absolutely crystal clear. 
These idiots argue for not having Coriolis because we don't observe any. They argue for having one reference frame because we don't see any deviation. The fundamentalist globetards will argue all day long about retention of angular velocity to argue a fact that we don't see any deviation. You think that's not clear? I think I'm being pretty concise. You are. Uh, hey, Nathan, just a point of fact, it's the object that leaves the non-inertial reference frame. You stay in the non-inertial reference frame. That object, it appears to deflect. That is the Coriolis effect because you are staying in the non-inertial reference frame. That object appears to curve, but it doesn't. It goes straight. You are curving, giving it an appearance that it is curving, the object. Wow. You could also when sum I... it up by saying it, there simply have to has to be more than one reference frame in order for Coriolis to that's, be experienced in any fashion. That's true. Yeah, you're right, Arwen. That's true. It's as simple as that. Like my picture that I made over. Yeah, but upon a pointing year out now. that having two reference frames shortens a flight, they'll start arguing that we've only got one. That's what happens. I, I, it's been a, it's been a while while I've trying to figure out how the obfuscation takes place, what routine goes, how does this go down the drain? And we've been doing it recently with all these different bloody housekeeping questions as we've got more and more concise. How quickly can we whip this concisely down the drain? They start yeah. off by saying, Earth is proven by us having two reference frames, as shown in a ring laser gyro. The gyro stays in its fixed reference frame and the Earth spins underneath at 15 degrees. There you go, Earth spins. And you go, oh right, if Earth spins, the flights would be shortened because Earth's spinning underneath them. Oh, no, 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 Earth and atmosphere travel as one. At that moment, they've flipped from arguing that Earth is proven to be spinning with two reference frames to arguing that the preposterous position that in the defiance of multiple directions of surface winds and the very nature of gas, it's actually being carried along with the Earth in order to give them no Coriolis No effect. Coriolis. You got and, it. You got and, it, Nathan. And yep. furthermore, furthermore... They do this because that's the reality. Not that we're spinning with Earth travelling along, that's impossible and debunked by the surface winds and gas nature, that we do not observe any Coriolis effect. That's the actual reality. So when you point out the reality that we experience, we don't see any deviation. They start to argue for a single reference frame. Like yep. the guy here. Oh, well, well, it retains the velocity. It doesn't have to leave the reference frame. Well, isn't that what you're arguing for? Two reference frames and it leaving it. <laughs> Yeah, they, they, they don't, don't even, even know what they're arguing for cognition. at this point. They don't even know their own argument. They're train wrecking themselves. You got it, Nathan. But they're Beautiful. having imaginary reference frame, like imaginary girlfriends. You know, the same system. <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey. It's you got to it. be true. You got it, Nathan. He's got it. That was beautiful. That it? You, need to, you need to peel that out and then run that uh, again and again and again and again. In that, that last two minutes, it was beautiful. That's why I sampled him and put him over a song. It's perfect. You listen to it <laughs> over and over again. I think it does sound great. Hey, Nathan, um, I asked Chopper to invite back. you. I guess he, he forgot. Um, there's a show that comes on um, on Dr. Science's channel every Friday, Friday Night Debates. Um, it'd be very manly of you to come and talk about this over there. Man, um, so I'd love to talk to you you're about that. You're in you, you don't really, you don't really do it fair. Who does this show. remind you? Who, who, who does it's this remind you? Every Friday, so I recommend you. Yeah, this is a very Brenda move. This is the Brenda yeah, it's move. Brenda. So you're here now, talking to me now, and you're saying you'd be a man if you came over here and talked. You're talking to me now, you fundamentalist religious zealot. You can ask me whatever you like. What will happen though is that I'll point out when you claim angular velocity is being retained, that would be you arguing for a single reference frame i.e. it not demonstrating any deviation. That's where you ran away last time, Kosho. Now, we don't away, need Nate. a different platform for you to address that. I saved myself. That's what I did. I spent too much time in here with you yesterday. I run yeah. away. That's an obfuscation. I'm going to repeat it for the audience's benefit because he's immediately started obfuscating. What a shock. So, the point that Kosho ran away like a coward bitch 
was the point that I pointed out that him claiming angular velocity is retained upon leaving the non-inertial reference frame would be an argument for there being no Coriolis effect. Now let's see if the little coward bitch will address it. Go ahead, Kosho, you little coward bitch. Let's see how you get on with your single reference frame that's not going to give rise to any Coriolis. Off you and go, I'm Fundy. Sh I'm sure. I'm sure you're going to show it to everybody here that you're not a little coward, bitch. And you're going to. That's another obfuscation. So the answer I'm trying to get from you is about the single reference frame that won't give you a Coriolis that you're arguing for. You're going to address that, Fundy. See how quick we can get it down the drain this time. Coriolis dying on its every Friday, this Friday, including. C come on, mumble, come mumble, on. mumble, hey, mumble, hey, mumble, hey, mumble, hey. mumble, mumble. No other obfuscation. That was just a load of mumbling from Kosho. The point that the little coward bitch ran away last time, fourth time is when I pointed out that him arguing for the angular velocity being retained upon leaving the non-inertial reference frame was an argument that there is no Coriolis effect because that circumstance would not give any de deviation whatsoever. So I'd like to know why he's arguing for there being no Coriolis effect. See if he Wait, how would that not give any deviation This is exactly, exactly why we're not doing this here, Nathan. Uh, so that's a hand wave and I'm not going to be obliterated, so I will obliterate him. I'll absolutely demolish him. Kosho's argument is we don't have a Coriolis effect, even though the fundamentalist religious zealot position in terms of the current bullshit, heliocentric earth that's spinning, would be that they do have Coriolis effect, that they do not retain the angular velocity when leaving the single reference frame. Or in the case of George the senile old bastard Netanyuk, you don't have earth and atmosphere travelling as one because it wouldn't give you a Coriolis effect. So, Kosho, you little bitch, I'm going to point it out to you for the rest of your duration here. You don't seem to be able to or want to, so why should I go to another platform when you can't address my questions here? Nobody's interrupting you. I'm just pointing out for the sixth time that you've got a contradiction in terms. Your arguments fall into pieces. You're arguing against the current heliocentric rhetoric. Are you trying to destroy the rhetoric? Are you going against the heliocentric rhetoric because you want to destroy it? Are you secretly a mole against heliocentric rhetoric, arguing for there being no Coriolis effect? He doesn't need encouragement. He doesn't need encouragement. He doesn't need encouragement. He just needs the air and time to respond to me like he thinks he's going to get on some other platform where maybe I'll get muted. Rather than him getting this prolonged silence without Arwin interrupting him to, to actually respond when there's nice clean air for him. So we'll try it again. What I'm going to do is declare his position without interruption from my own side or his and then leave a nice long gap for as long as he's here for him to address he's the deafened. fact that he he's arguing before I've even started he summarizing. Must. I want to summarize that he's arguing for there being no Coriolis effect. Angular velocity is retained upon leaving the non-inertial reference frame, giving rise to no deviation, precisely what the heliocentric rhetoric okay. is. I'd want to know why he's arguing for there not being any Coriolis effect. Well, you're not going to get that out, am I, if he's deaf? Uh, sorry, we weren't talking to you, Fundy Wingman. Talking to Kosho, the little bitch. Kosho is deafened. Hey, hey, hold on, shut up. He deafened himself, Nathan. Oh, of course he did. They stuck this. That's what George did. He stuck his head in the sand, started shaving. Yeah, I'd rather not listen. I'd rather stick my head in the sand and go on deafen than actually address the contradiction I've been punting here for the last 48 hours. Yeah, Kosho, you little coward bitch. Oh, should I go somewhere else? Will that make me a man? Maybe going on deafens made you a man, Kosho. <laughs> the the first time he left here, he went back to the to the twenty four seven two point oh server, and I was there too, and I told him to come back here and handle it, because he was saying that you were twisting his words. Oh really? So uh, can I? So he comes back. And he deafens himself. So, yeah. Can I make a suggestion? And there lies think. the point with the problem with trying to turn things into a flame war. If you throw venom and fire and spit and have nothing but. Oh, you know, we don't want to hear your uh, nonsense. Go ahead, Righteous. Give us. Go ahead, Yeah, because it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a thought to have that if Who you cares? do nothing but. Ad hominem attack. Oh, we sorry. Don't this is, about, sorry this, we don't care about it, your philosophy. This is an appeal to format fallacy. It's not yep. philosophy. It's, it's proper debate rules. Sorry, it's an appeal to format fallacy. 
my argument, which you are not addressing, is that Kosho is arguing for there being a single reference frame. You don't leave the non-inertial reference frame when you travel in an aeroplane, according to Kosho. That doesn't give you Coriolis. I've said that nine times. Kosho put himself on deafen rather than answer. He said he wasn't going to do it. He said I should go somewhere else to talk about it with him. But you now seem to say that that's what perhaps, not a reasonable way. Perhaps what See, the guy was talking through me the whole time. I unmuted him just to point out that he wasn't listening to me. That's their only tactic here. I've absolutely destroyed Coriolis. Highlighted the senility in George Netanyuk with his preposterous assertions that fly in the face of natural laws and the wind. Yeah? And you say that the way I do it isn't very nice. Hello. I'm trying to tell you that if you if you have okay, if you have a legitimate point to make. What, my point is that they're arguing for a single reference frame and Coriolis would require two. Yeah, no, How concise whatever, is that? Whatever your, your point is. I'm arguing for this point. Yes, I am. My point being that they are arguing for a single reference frame when the thing that the globe requires is two. That's concise. Right. But you you want to address that? To or maybe talk about how I said it to you. Ten times between those points. Not you, Emerald. The other bonehead. I know, but I mean, Come just on, in general. Come people... Essay! Essay! Vamanos, muchachos! Is that that Moto Fox Fire idiot? Hello? Vamos! What's going on? Why are we talking in Spanish? What's going on? <laughs> you said... <laughs> You started it. Vamos, muchachos. <laughs> andale, andale. That was andale. you, Nathan. You started that shit. I, I would like to point it, out. I've been trying to share it. it with Hold on Good a second. Time. Got rumpus again. I think uh, Righteous Force had an idea. Righteous, yes. what was your idea? Well, He's my idea is that I think Emerald and Zynek make a great oh, dynamic wait. duo for some polar action. So I suggest we like let Zynek and Emerald team up. Team Zanuck. Yeah. Girl, I mean, we're, you know not, we're not talking true. about anything interesting, anyways. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Zanuck did, did make a statement in the Discord chat that the Earth does not rotate underneath the airplane. He actually said that. Oh, he did. So, okay. Well, okay. he's off mute. That's okay. So, I there just is no, off mute, yeah. so according to Zanuck, there is no Coriolis well, effect. Well, then there is no Coriolis well, effect. There is Coriolis. Uh, can I just say one thing just to help? Because this has been, I'm sitting there. Yeah, I, well, I've got to stop you already, haven't I, Zanik? Because you've said there is Coriolis. Now, just for clarity, you mean on Earth, frame. right? There is Coriolis on Earth. The non reference frame. Just clarity. Oh, Straight away, need clarity, not rumpusing. Clarity. You mean on Earth, right? Because, yes, there is Coriolis. It's a real thing. Do you mean on yes, Earth? It's a, real, it's a real thing. Now, there, the non inertial reference frame. You haven't answered I, me, I'm starting badly. I'm ans asking a question. You said, yes, there is Coriolis. Now you've just confirmed that Coriolis is real. I couldn't give a shit. Are you saying there is real Coriolis on Earth? Yes. Well, then you need to do your reference frames for that, Zanik. You need there to be a non-inertial and spinning reference frame going underneath things. So you started off by saying that the planes have Earth not turning underneath them? That's not Coriolis, Zanik. So straight away, we're off to a very bad start. The non-inertial reference frame is the frame where... The I don't need to know about Coriolis. You started off by stating that the Earth does not rotate under planes. Now, we've already got the clarity we need in terms of what Coriolis is and isn't. It must yeah, rotate. Joke you told that it must... Like, I'm not interrupting. Why am I getting rumpus? Why am I rumpus? Right, What's going on? Rumpusing. It must rotate underneath planes. To be a Coriolis effect in effect, Zanik. You're saying no, it doesn't. No, incorrect. Incorrect. Everything in the non inertial reference frame is rotating and accelerating. That's by definition. Yeah, that's on the non inertial reference frame. That's the spinning Earth. According to you, the Earth is spinning. That's the non inertial reference frame. Yeah. Okay, with you so far. The ground, the airplane, the ball, everything is in the non inertial reference frame. Well, then you don't have any Coriolis effect. You must leave the non inertial reference frame to have Coriolis effect. Upon leaving the non-inertial reference frame, you'll experience an apparent deviation as you rotate underneath the object that travels through the inertial reference frame. Now, I'll ask you the same question that I asked Kosho. 
why is it that you are declaring that everything remains in the non-inertial reference frame when that's a defiance He's of Coriolis didn't, didn't effect? Let him finish a sentence. That's a defiance of Coriolis effect. Word. Everything in that non-inertial reference frame is there. Nothing leaves it. It's well, then there's no Coriolis. Yes, there is. And this no. To have Coriolis effect, you must leave the non-inertial reference frame. If I'm holding a drone and it's spinning on a roundabout and I hold on to it, it's not leaving the non-inertial reference frame and I will not experience Coriolis. But if I let go of the drone and it leaves my hand, I will. So I it want to know the same question. Why are you all rumpusing it me still? I know why you're rumpusing me because he must. He must rumpus me. And I'm being told that I'm interrupting him. Anna. Yes, you did it several times. Sorry, he's arguing that everything remains in the non-inertial reference frame, whoever's objecting. <laughs> and when I get to point this out, I get told that I'm interrupting someone else when I'm clearly going to get interrupted when I point out that his claim that everything remains in the non-inertial reference frame. That is his claim. I don't need to interrupt and clarify. He's claiming it remains in the non-inertial reference frame. To have Coriolis effect, you must leave the non-inertial reference frame that no, is how of course i'm interrupting you assholes aren't i assholes tell me again whoever told me i'm interrupting them tell me you again that i'm interrupting them assholes. yeah yeah no i'm not i'm trying to concisely summarize where he's wrong but you don't like it and you interrupt me and then claim i'm interrupting right, you and, and so why don't right you again, shut right? your pie holes shut fundies up, and let me get to the end of this point without interrupting me i know why because he's claiming something that won't give you Coriolis. And you've got to obfuscate me highlighting that nice and concisely by interrupting me. Because when I ask him how he's claiming there is no Coriolis, because upon not leaving the non-inertial reference frame, you won't have a Coriolis, I want an answer to why Zanuck is arguing for there being no Coriolis effect. There being only one reference frame that you don't leave, according to his claim. So Zanuck, why are you claiming that there is no Coriolis effect when the globe religion says there is. Never said that. Coriolis is fine and well. And because we all in the rotating reference frame, the non inertial reference frame, we do not leave it ever. Then there is no Coriolis! There are other reference frames. You and QE... Yeah, and you've got to leave the non inertial reference frame and enter one of those in order for there to be a Coriolis effect. And you keep telling us about how we're all in and staying in and remain in the non inertial reference frame, which is an argument for there being no Coriolis Correct. effect. Didn't but of course, me, now that I'm seconds. being interrupted, this making this concise the... summary again, I'm sure I'll be accused of interrupting him. Hey, asshole, maybe you want to tell me about I, I how go. I'm it's having to shout over Zanuck while I summarize how he's arguing for the being. Bullshit. No Coriolis effect with words like bullshit over the top of me. Yeah, let's stick him on mute because he's a fucking asshole who must obfuscate it and then claim I'm interrupting I him. Answer, I really yeah, do he's still doing it. it now just for the audience. I'll periodically let you know that he isn't listening to a word because every word that comes out of my mouth absolutely rapes their religion of a ball earth spinning now doesn't it because to have the effects we observe in reality let's pop him on mute again because he will not shut up to have the effects that Zanuck's describing of a single reference frame that we don't leave that's absolutely been made clear by Zanuck we won't have Coriolis and every time he details how we're not leaving it and that there are other reference frames, but we remain on the non-inertial one, I scream at the top of my lungs, there is no Coriolis then, Zanuck. And my question is why he's punting there being no Coriolis, because you must leave the non-inertial reference frame to have Coriolis. But he'll never address that. He'll say Coriolis is fine and dandy in his next breath, even though his example doesn't give him Coriolis, because you're not leaving the non-inertial reference frame if you're still part of it like me holding a drone on a roundabout i'm not going to experience coriolis until i let it go and it leaves the non-inertial reference frame but according to zanuck while he rumpuses me every time i make this concisely he says we are always in the non-inertial reference frame therefore there is no coriolis in his example i want to know why he's arguing for the being no coriolis go you let him finish. Okay, thank, thank you. So you're in the non-inertial reference frame, which means an accelerating or rotating reference frame. 
the inertial reference frame is some reference frame outside of that, a picture outside of the earth where you see it all spinning. You're not accelerating. You're at a constant velocity or you're not moving. That's the inertial reference frame. On the inertial, non-inertial reference frame, which is rotating, no, the non-inertial reference frame. Let's just stick to which one's which. Ow. Let's stick airplane, to which one's which. He's already it'll double apparently speaking. Curve. It'll apparently curve because there is a thing called just conservation on. of linear momentum. Uh, and when get you clarity. Stop. Describe which is which. Which is the non-inertial reference frame in this example? Which is the non-inertial reference frame? Please reference frame would be you the plane the ball the that's earth, three things the stop things. he's just deliberately being confusing for the audience i've been concise i've summarized now he's giving five things at once everything that he's is rotating, listing everything, everything that's that in rotating, one reference frame Shut everything up, that is rotating or accelerating is a non-inertial reference frame anything and that's not moving anything that's standing still or not accelerating he's just given two examples he's just said two things in the same reference frame stop stop I want you to start your sentence with in the non-inertial reference frame. Then when you finish that example, I want you to pause for breath and hopefully, for the love of God, nobody interrupts you. Then I want you to start a new statement within the inertial reference frame. So two separate statements. One that describes the inertial reference frame and then a separate second that describes the non-inertial reference frame, please. Slowly. So we have a non-inertial reference frame, which means everything is rotating or accelerating. The, non the inertial reference frame is anything that's not moving or not accelerating outside the Earth, out in space, looking at the Earth. What you would see if something is traveling north would be a, something tra with a straight line trajectory. Okay. So in, in order, space. Uh, 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 hold on. So in Zanuck's example, with the Earth and atmosphere and everything in it, one reference frame and space being the second reference frame in order to observe any coriolis effect you would need to leave earth's alleged ball earth atmosphere and enter space the second reference frame to observe any coriolis effect whatsoever now this absolutely pisses in the face of Neil deGrasse Tyson, who asserts you can observe it with a football on a football field, absolutely in Earth's atmosphere, as the Earth rotates underneath the ball. So now I'd like to know why you are asserting the second reference frame is space, flying in the face of heliocentric priest Neil deGrasse Tyson, who makes it clear that a ball enters the second reference frame when it leaves a footballer's hand. Identical to my example with a roundabout, a simplistic example, while I get rumpus to all shit. Where the leaving of my hand with the drone example is what gives you a Coriolis effect. Same as Neil deGrasse Tyson. Same as every definition of Coriolis effect. But unlike your example where something leaving a roundabout has also got the roundabout's atmosphere travelling along with it. You're flying in the face of the actual rhetoric spouted by Neil deGrasse Tyson. And I want to know why. Because I think you misunderstand what the Coriolis effect is. In that Coriolis effect is the effect of an apparent deviation as you leave a non-inertial reference frame. Sorry, correction for John. As the projectile in your hand leaves the non-inertial reference frame, i.e. a roundabout, upon leaving the non-inertial spinning reference frame and entering the second inertial reference frame you as the observer on the non-inertial spinning reference frame will observe an apparent deviation because you rotate underneath this would be exampled with a ball and a roundabout being tossed from your hand in a straight line it appears to curve because you rotate underneath in Neil deGrasse Tyson's example, the ball appears to curve from your position in the stands, but in fact it travels in a straight line and the goalposts move underneath. That is Coriolis effect. I absolutely understand it, Zanuck, you if arrogant I, prick. If I might, if I might interject. Every no, you well, interrupt while I'm making my summary, you mean, you prick. Necessarily a idiot. Yeah, prick. What, by interject, you mean interrupt my he summary, is prick. A science communicator. And now continue no to talk while I berate you for your constant interruption of my concise demolition of an assertion that I don't understand. When at a base level, I absolutely understand and concise it, 
concisely summarize it whilst being recorded for this asshole Zanik who Notifier. does not Notifier. have any real Notifier. He was, Nathan was Did addressing the man. Communicator? This is it. No concise summary for why he has decided to go against the Globe Earth rhetoric. Just non-stop Discord rumpusing. So will I get an explanation for why Zanik is flying in the face of the actual rhetoric from Neil deGrasse Tyson? Or when I get to the end of my summary this time, will I receive... Can I interrupt you really, really loudly when you're at, at the end of your point? So Zanik's saying no Coriolis, single reference frame, really? not leaving it. And I want to know why he's going against Globe Earth rhetoric of having a Coriolis with his single reference frame that is not left, left, left in Neil deGrasse Tyson's example with a ball. Of course, I'm dealing with fundamental fuckwits and religious zealots. So I'm never going to get to concisely summarise the point that destroys their religion because they must have outbursts. Yeah? Constant ejaculation whenever I'm concisely summarising the demolition of their religion. Let's try again. I'll just preface it by saying, excuse me, religious zealots. Try to pay attention and control your anger when I piss all over your religion. That means shut up at the conclusion. Xanix describing a scenario that doesn't have Coriolis. According to him, you could only have Coriolis upon leaving Earth's atmosphere, alleged to be no. a sphere. Who is that fundamentalist religious True. zealot that interrupted me? Zanik. Of course it was. It's okay, Zanik. It'll be over soon. Your religion dying, that is. You just have to bear with me and not interrupt when I succinctly demolish your religion. And your religion comes with a contradiction asserted by you that we wouldn't have Coriolis. Because it's all travelling in one reference frame. Something that must be left in order... Oh, who was that religious zealot? You are misrepresenting what Zanuck is saying. I didn't ask that. I asked who the religious zealot that interrupted me was. What's your name, son? Uh, Zanuck just said that you don't experience Coriolis till you get to space. Yeah, he said. So, yeah, <laughs> nobody's being misrepresented, brother. I never, yeah, I never I said that. Sorry, he's now saying he didn't say that. That's a lie. The reason I so carefully asked him to summarize which were the two reference frames was because upon leaving the first and entering the second, you will experience Coriolis effect if Earth is spinning. That's why I asked him to concisely summarize what reference frame was what. What he tried to do was double speak around with several examples and both the reference frames in the same sentence. Because yep. he's a double speaking Nathan, globe head asshole. Me, yep. I'm trying to concisely summarize it, but every time I do, I get someone like this fundamentalist globe Nathan, seller interrupting me Nathan. like he's doing now. So I'm I'll try again, it's gonna be about 20 times of me trying to concisely summarize as no, Zanuck's example no, doesn't give him Coriolis. But every time I get to the end, somebody's gonna tell me I'm misrepresenting him before I get to the end of my point. Because it's really hard. I understand how Nathan. hearing my words must be devastating for you Nathan. fundies who think you live on a spinning ball. So you're never going to let me in, end my statement. You've got to interrupt it because cognitively it's painful for you. So I'll try again. Let's, let's see before I even start if they start interrupting me. I want an answer at the end as well, but heaven forbid I even get to the end of the question. Yeah? Given that Zanik has asserted that the second reference frame is outside of an Earth atmosphere... That is the spinning, rotating, single <laughs> reference. Who was that fundamentalist religious zealot that needed sorry, to? Sorry, sorry, that was me. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, just wanted to say, please, <laughs> I, I updated the picture. Oh, right, okay. You got an eye on a stick. Hey, hey, Nathan, have him state what is in the non-inertial reference frame, its limits, and what is in the inertial reference frame and its limits. But, Thank okay. you, Kiwi. That's very well asked. And let me respond. So everything on the Earth that is spinning or accelerating is in the non-inertial reference frame. Just then there is no Coriolis effect. I won't scream it this time, but I'll make it plain. That's an argument for the being no Coriolis effect. And I want to know why you're arguing against the globe Earth rhetoric with that shit. You're saying no Coriolis with that example then. Let me, let he me didn't say. say no Coriolis. There would be no Coriolis in his example. I'm saying it! Dumbass. Can somebody Emerald. has some. Emerald, are you deaf? I want a response from Emerald. Did you hear what I just said? Why can't I finish my sentence? Because I'm talking to Emerald. 
I'm saying it, Emerald. Trying to say one second, I'm like saying it. In Zanuck's example, there is no Zach Coriolis because there's only a single reference show. frame which you never Not leave. I'm saying it, Emerald. Shut up, Kosho. Are you so dumb that you don't realize when I'm saying it? I've yelled it into the mic four times. His example will not bear a Coriolis effect. I'm saying it. I'm ripping apart your religion, Emerald. Well, right, are you deaf? Nope. Are you done? Yeah, Emerald. Am I done? Essay. Yeah, I'm done with you, you stupid religious zealot. Zanuck's example gives you no Coriolis, and I want to know why he's flying in the face of the religiotard zealot that says you will have Coriolis, and all you've got to say is that. I think you and Can Zanuck disagree on whether or not that would mean there's no Coriolis. Sorry. Can I, Does the, could I say uh, something? Uh, I'm asking, I'm asking, oh, I'm asking somebody, Emerald. Somebody I'm asking Emerald. Why is everyone else talking? Emerald. Hold on a second. Nathan Emerald. And Emerald. Emerald. Does the Earth rotate underneath aeroplanes and helicopters in order to have a Coriolis I'm, effect? Yes or no? I'm not making that claim right now. I'm just listening to what you're I don't you give a shit what you're Zanuck. doing. You're arguing against me who's talking to Zanuck about his claim that we only have one reference frame that you never leave within Earth's atmosphere. That would be no Coriolis effect. And I'm asking you a similar question. Does I think Earth... Zanuck disagrees. Oh, and now you're interrupting me, are you? Effect. Were you not complaining earlier about me interrupting people when you're now interrupting me? Well, I'll ask you the same question. What's happening here, Emerald, is I'm holding the same exact fire to your toes. And I want a bloody answer. Does Earth rotate underneath helicopters and aeroplanes in order to give you Coriolis effect as asserted by the globe religion or not? Emerald over. All right. My claim is that that helicopter or plane or whatever would experience a deflection over distance that it travels across the surface of the Earth consistently. No, it will not. Oh, if yes? it experienced a deflection, the flight time from Charlotte, North Carolina would be an hour and a half when traveling to LA. Because that's not what I've read has claimed would happen. The plane duration from Charlotte, North Carolina would be 1.5 hours rather than 4.5 hours if the Earth rotated under planes, as you have just asserted. So if you are claiming I haven't read Earth, any citation that claims that, so I'm not going to think that that's true. Because you won't. Let me ask giving you a Let different narrative. Again. That's a Let logical deduction of what would Sorry, happen. Sorry, if you'll if you'll if you'll bust up just a little again. bit in, the, in your in your life. Excuse me, there, everybody else rumpusing the crap out of this conversation with Emerald. Twelve hours. Excuse me, everybody else rumpusing the conversation. Explaining to the mentally ill how to navigate an airplane and how the Earth works. Who the hell is this? The pilots are crap. very, very Nobody's detailed in, you, in their explanations of how I'm talking to traveling Emerald. east to west idiot. would not affect the trip time. Who's this asshole? Traveling west to east Who's would not affect the trip completely, time. completely locking up the mic? I'm talking to Emerald. I'm asking the is question again, Emerald. If I'm allowed by the other asshole. I've already answered the question vision. if it's going to be the same Is one. the Earth rotating underneath planes and helicopters, yes or no? I've already asked. I've already answered that question. You didn't answer. Like hear my response. Now You're recording the video. It. You can go back and listen to it if you'd like. It, you red herring him. No Everybody else, else no except Emerald. Please contain your ejaculations. Thank you, Emerald. It's a simple question. If you already answered, it shouldn't be an issue to repeat your answer. There's been a lot of rumpusing. So, does Earth rotate under a plane as it is alleged to do so in order to generate Coriolis effect? Yes or no. If the plane continues to move in a straight line in an inertial reference frame, then the Earth, as part of the non-inertial reference frame, will rotate underneath. And the In that case, a flight from yeah. Charlotte, North Carolina to LA would take 1.5 hours, and it doesn't. Lancer. It does not. not uh, that it doesn't. If the Earth is rotating underneath, as you have just asserted it is, then a Charlotte flight to LA would take an hour and a half. Did you hear what I said when, as, as I explained it? You just said that if it does behave like I said, then it would happen. But the way I explained it was as it increases in distance from the center of rotation. As Traveling it increases east to west in does not change the, the center distance. of rotation. So it won't, reduce, it won't create this massive deviation you seem to claim would happen. So so it, it, it's it's, it's ticking to the ground. Owen, shut up! So it won't generate a deviation. It won't have to Coriolis. Uh, uh, excuse me? It won't have a deviation, did you just say? 
the the deviation as no you just said it won't the... don't go on about the deviation it will you double speaking asshole no, I'm, you just I'm, said I'm it going to you now are talking uh, through me you asshole you're sentence, talking you through me yeah asshole i'm getting clarity on your double speak and you're talking through me to obfuscate you just said it won't experience I'm, deviation you still seem to be stuttering through me so i'll try again shut your mouth emerald and listen to me repeat what you just stated you just stated it won't experience deviation correct can you smell that can you taste it is it nice is it painful cognitively not really so it is frustrating. Are you going to answer me? Not letting myself finish a sentence. You're going to answer? I, I, there was a great long pause. I'm, I whis I managed to yeah. lean up on the mic and whisper to take the piss out of you. I didn't hear the whisper part. I just heard, do you, you do not experience. And that was the end of the feed from my end. That's a complete obfuscation. Still not answering me. I didn't hear the last word. What was your question? You're having a laugh, right? Yep. He, he's retarded. Could you repeat the question, please? Let's start again. Okay. Does Earth rotate underneath a plane in order for there to be a deviation called Coriolis? An apparent deflection because Earth rotates under planes. Does Earth rotate underneath planes. Yes or no? My answer is going to be yes, but the mechanism behind which I say... I just needed a yes, because after you assert that yes, Earth rotates underneath planes... You would have a flight time from Charlotte, North Carolina to L.A. that takes 1.5 hours because Earth, according to you, rotates under planes. Yes, Nathan. Earth rotates under planes. No, Emerald. We don't experience Earth rotating underneath planes. If we did, there'd be hour and a half durations of flights when traveling west from Charlotte, North Carolina to LA. Please confirm that message has been received and understood. Not yes, yep. as declared by you, but no. Take your time, Emerald. Maybe you claim I'm talking over you. No, you're not. So, not yes. I asked if Earth rotates underneath planes in line with there being a Coriolis effect. Answer from you, Emerald, the one being tortured now, was yes. When in fact, no. Because the flight times would be shortened, wouldn't they, Emerald? If Earth rotated yeah. under planes... The answer to the wouldn't they, I would say, is no, because the direction of the Coriolis... Sorry, so is that a no... Uh, sorry, which would sorry, don't just start spouting! Okay, I guess I won't Stop. Finish, then. Is your position now changing to no, Earth doesn't rotate under planes? No, I'm not changing my answer. I'm qualifying my answer with more details, but you seem to not like that, so you like to interrupt me in the middle of it. Okay, is that a position where I can talk now, or will I be accused of interrupting you? No, you can talk now, I'm done. I got clarity on your position. Uh, I asked, does Earth rotate underneath planes? And you said yes. Then I gave you an example that absolutely demolished that assertion. Now, you're saying you've got some clarity that undoes my 1.5 hour flight time? If Earth rotates underneath, as you asserted with your affirmative yes, maybe offer a rebuttal yes. for why we don't see an hour and a half duration from Charlotte to LA. Because I would Earth, love to, if you would allow me. If you would let me finish, maybe I'd get to the end of my conclusion. 
but it seems you were so desperate to interrupt me that I wasn't going to get there on this occasion, Emerald. Perhaps you'd like to project that all over me now and tell me that this is me interrupting you. I'll try again. So, you are incorrect. Earth does not rotate under planes because you'd have an hour and a half duration if Earth rotated under planes when travelling from Charlotte to LA. Maybe you'd like to address how Earth is demonstrably not rotating under planes given that flight times aren't reduced and you're declaring, yes, it is rotating underneath when blatantly it isn't. I think the point was to the extent that you were saying, Nathan, it's that's the disagreement. That's, you're not that's Emerald. Um, May I offer a rebuttal to your claim of the one and a half hour flight time? Sorry, I just specifically asked you to offer a rebuttal for the hour and a half flight time and left a long pause so long that one of your wingmen decided to start mumbling. Maybe try to listen awesome. to my specific request for you to rebut the one and a half hour flight time that would be in effect if Earth rotated underneath planes, as you confirmed when saying yes. That would be, just for summary and clarity, me asking you for specifically a rebuttal. I didn't use that word last time, but obviously you're a bit slow. I would like a rebuttal, please, right, Emerald, then for my demonstration of why Earth doesn't rotate under planes, as you've claimed they do with your yes, when asked if Earth rotates under planes. It doesn't. Okay, I will begin my rebuttal now. So, the definition of the Coriolis force, obviously, as we all, I think, are aware, implies a deviation. But the direction of that deviation is, in the, is to the right of the direction of motion in the Northern Hemisphere. This if you're argument traveling from isn't Chuck, about the Coriolis effect right now, Emerald. We're using the causes of the Coriolis effect. We're not talking about planes deflecting. We're talking about your position, which you said that the Earth spins underneath the plane. If that's so, then a plane flying west with the Earth coming Seriously? east at 860 miles an hour and the plane flying west at 500 miles an hour, that's a total speed of 1,360 miles an hour. Distance equals rate times time. That would be 1.5 hours. We're not talking about friggin' planes deflecting. This isn't a Coriolis effect argument. It's a Coriolis cause argument. And you, sir, have been erased. Thank you. Didn't I just get accused of being a wingman and then QE does exactly the same oh, thing? Oh, shut up. We're still not talking to you. Your name's still not Emerald. Okay, can we just have Emerald finish his point? Then we can know what he's saying. Finish what point? It's made his point. It's over! The point I, point I, no, I have not. Just, 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 point. Just, for, just for the guys in the panel, right? I asked him, does Earth rotate underneath planes? I got an answer. Yes. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. There'd be a shortened duration of flight. Now we need a rebuttal to that. Yes, that's what I'm providing. Or at least what I would hope to finish providing by the end of the hour. If this you is, appeal to if, the if this is an, hold, hold on, hold on, Kiwi. If you now repeat something that is to do with arguing about how Coriolis works, when we're arguing about whether or not Earth has the ingredients for Coriolis effect, I'm going to get really, really annoyed. The claim that I disagree with of your argument earlier is specifically whether or not the Coriolis effect would cause this one and a half hour flight time. So, of course, I'm going to discuss the mechanics of the Coriolis effect. It's no. not the Coriolis uh, effect! Yeah, I knew it. I knew he'd do it. No. No. We're not arguing about what Coriolis is. We're arguing about Earth rotating underneath. Aeroplanes, that is. Right. I'm under the impression that the rotation of the Earth underneath the airplane is, the, by description, the Coriolis effect. Yeah, it would that be if it happened. And you'd have a, an hour and a half flight time. That's what you're trying to address here. I'm trying to address whether, why why, or why not the Coriolis effect would cause this one and a half hour flight. Oh my god. Yeah, we're not we don't arguing about Coriolis lectures. and what it is. For the fifth time. That's not what we're arguing about. We know what Coriolis is. We know what causes it. Leaving a non-inertial reference frame and entering an inertial reference frame. We know what causes it. 
We're asking whether or not your spinning ball Earth has the necessary ingredients. And the necessary ingredients... That's not the question I was... And the necessary the ingredients, I Fundy I interrupting me, and, and the necessary ingredients, like Fundy interrupting me, is Earth rotating underneath them planes. That's why he asked you the que that's why he asked you the question. The first question was, does the earth rotate underneath planes? Not the Coriolis effect. My answer to his question, does the earth rotate underneath, is I said, yes, but perhaps not in the way that you're thinking of it, because the way I think Get it does is according to the mechanics here. of the Coriolis effect. Sorry. My understanding is that the rate of the rotation underneath is, rotation. is governed by the Coriolis effect, not this constant. Oh my God! Power. No, yeah. no, no worries. Or, no worries. Just trying to rotation that okay. rotates. Let me just try and address him. He's saying the rate. The Ugh, he's saying the rate. So I've got a drone in my hand, and it's trying to fly, but I'm holding on to it as I spin on a non-inertial reference frame, Emerald. Yeah. When I let okay. go of the, when I let go of the drone, yeah, is it? Mm -hmm speed when traveling directly up in any way governed by my rotation speed underneath so initially when you let go of the drone it's not going to travel straight up it's going to move up but also with some sideways velocity because you were holding it with some tangential velocity so it's going to start moving up and to the side and then if there's air friction that will slow it down horizontally it will then and only then proceed to move straight up but it doesn't immediately start moving straight up. And it, it, it moving up, it is it leaving the non-inertial reference frame, correct? If you're if there's no longer a centripetal force tethering it to the rotating object, then yeah. Right. So in the same way, when a plane leaves the spinning non-inertial reference frame of Earth in their model, that would be no longer being tethered, correct? Correct. Therefore, Earth would be rotating underneath that plane at that moment, correct? Initially, it wouldn't be, because like in the drone example, the moment you let go of the drone, it is moving up, but it's also, it still has that you know, tangential velocity. Okay, and, and how long Similarly. approximately, okay, how long approximately after I completely let go of my hand, how long after is it in the second inertial reference frame approximately in seconds is it is it like 60 seconds later it kind of rotates with me for about a minute and then flies off and has coriolis no it's, it's however long it takes for the external forces to make it stop moving with that tangential velocity so give it me in seconds drone, approximately approximately in is it minutes or is it seconds there, there's not a there, there's not a second value to it it depends on roughly the roughly approximately is it is it a split second? There is, is it no 10 approximate minutes? single answer. It depends on the scenario. Okay, uh, just so that the audience understands what we're talking about. So I'm not asking you anything at the minute. I'm holding a drone and I'm spinning. And I'm saying that when I let the go drone go, it leaves my hand. And you're saying that for a certain period of time, it's technically left my hand but still spinning with me. And I want to know approximately how long that lasts for. Is it 10 minutes? Is it an hour? Is it a second, or is it a fraction of a second? Just out of interest. So, what, I, the moment you let go of... Oh, 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 for the love of Jesus. Go ahead. <laughs> What's that? Thank you, thank you. So, when you've got a sniper... The, the no, Ranty, sniper you're not Emerald. Do. Ranty, I want Emerald to answer me. How long approximately okay, after I let go of the drone? 45 minutes to get a question answered, but, you know, I'm trying to help out here. I've been waiting 45 minutes to say something, and every time I've jumped in, I've been told to shut up. Get your own show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to help. You know, I, I mean, I, I, the same. Literally, I, I spent bullet. about an hour on your show trying to get a word over George, and you just let him rumpus me, and then after about an hour of it, you were like, oh, by the way, we can't hear a word you're saying. Oh, well, thank you. So I'm not really that concerned at this minute, Ranty. So, Emerald, how long after I let go of the drone do I experience Coriolis effect? The moment you let go of the drone, it's going to start moving with some... It's, it no longer has, you know, a centripetal force tethering it down. So it's going to move immediately in a straight line toward the side. 
immediately. Then it immediately uh, sounds like a second to me. So pretty much straight away, we start experiencing Coriolis effect once it leaves the roundabout, the drone that is. Correct. But the Coriolis so, effect is uh, what makes it. I didn't it need anything weirder. else there. Okay. Thank you. All right. So you're talking about it retaining tangential velocity is really just a fleeting effect. It's pretty much instantaneously demonstrating Coriolis, though, basically. Like a plane. Not, not would pretty, uh, it seems I'm being rumpus in my summary. I, I'm rebutting this nonsense, but clearly that's Emerald's time to keep talking. Yes, we've got clarity for your shitty point that it's retaining angular velocity for one millionth of one second. But the rest Incorrect. of the time, it's, it's excuse claim. me, Emerald. I'm not going to allow you. Is this a problem? Have you got some fundamentalist, religious, zealot, global, verbal diarrhea? I'm talking. So we've done away with your little nonsense about this fleeting moment where it retains angular velocity, and we're pretty much into the crux of the fact that it's got to leave the non-inertial reference frame to demonstrate Coriolis effect. And I'm saying now we're going to transpose that over to the aeroplanes. That pretty much immediately when they leave that runway, yeah, like the drone in my hand, it's the same. It's on a non-inertial reference frame entering an inertial reference frame, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, pretty much instantaneously with that aeroplane, the Earth rotates underneath, giving rise to a Coriolis according to the globe Earth rhetoric, right? Don't need a confirmation, that's correct, yes. They claim that there's Coriolis effect. They claim that when you leave the spinning ball Earth and your football travels in a straight line, it deviates from your position on the ground because the Earth rotates underneath. Just like it does with an aeroplane when it leaves the ground, it starts to deviate, right? That amount of deviation depends on your trajectory changing. But the fact that it's doing it because the Earth rotates underneath Emerald, that's the bit we're focused on. Not the apparent deviation from the ground. The cause of it deviating, if you were to observe it from the ground, is the Earth rotating underneath the plane now, isn't it? But is, isn't it important to measure it from the ground? If we're going to talk about a one and a half hour flight time, that would mean that someone on the ground would have to see that plane traveling geographically from one end of the country to the other in one and a half hours. So we're, we are no, talking about... No, 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 that's that you wrong. Have to no, you just no. get on... No, no, that's incorrect. You just... Let me, let, I'll say it really slowly, right? All right? You'd get on the plane, right, at Charlotte. You'd hand over your ticket to the guy, yeah? You'd sit mm -hmm. down. Then they'd shut the door and take off. And then an hour and a half later, the plane would land. Because, in addition to its flight speed, the Earth rotated underneath, bringing LA ever closer to it as it travelled through the air. Now, from the ground, you could qualify this as a apparent deviation if it started turning north from the ground. But in the air, because of that cause that gives you that apparent deviation you want to focus so badly on, which we're not talking about, we're talking about the Earth rotating underneath that plane, not the thing you see from the ground, the fact that you'd have an hour and a half flight time. Nothing to be experienced on the ground. You can't see that far from Car Carolina to LA. You can't see that far. But you can definitely experience an hour and a half flight time when you land after an hour and a half in the air because the continent came to you with the Earth spinning underneath. The problem, Emerald, is that that would be what you needed to be happening to have the apparent deviation you focus on and how much it changes as you move north. That's what you get to have that deviation. The Earth rotating underneath. But that's absurd because we don't have the hour and a half flight time. We don't have the ingredients to cause the deviation you want to focus on from the ground. Because if we did, people would be getting off that flight in an hour and a half. Nothing to do with observing it and everything to, it, to do with it being shortened by about two and a half hours. Get it now, Emerald? Mm, you've is. been erased. I bet you didn't get it. And that. so has Being your practical. religion. Say goodnight! To your religion, because it's over right there, baby. Ese! Vamanos, muchachos! Spanish classes on Mondays. I've got a, a real <laughs> uh, world No, no way, no way. You're not having that, Paul. Go ahead, Ranty. Oh, bloody hell. Where's my mute button? Ranty, are you there? Oh. Uh, the lights, party's over. I don't rumpus ranty.
Go on, Ranty. Yeah. Well, from what I can recall... I'm um, on mute. Good stuff. Stay on mute. So I'm going to stay uh, on mute. Good, good, good. George, George says that there are differences between the objects that are moving in the sky. So anything that's powered like a plane or a helicopter still stays in the initial reference frame. However, bullets and um, cannonballs and stuff like that that are not powered will be affected by Coriolis. That's I what understand. they say. Wrong. Okay, sorry, let me just address that, Ranty. If you, if, I, I won't be there on Saturday. I've got better things to do. But if you can just, uh, just, just put this analogy to George. So what George is saying is, because you didn't use any Globe Earth references with your example, which is fortunate for me because I'm going to detail it with a roundabout. So George is saying that if you have powered flight, you don't experience Coriolis. So according to George Netanyuk, who is clearly senile, and I will demonstrate how now. If you leave the roundabout with your drone, upon leaving your hand, it will track with you because it's powered. That's what the senile ramblings of an old man have said in regards to Coriolis. You won't experience power, uh, Coriolis effect if you have powered flight. Ergo, you leave a roundabout that's spinning... You, I can ask, stop saying you, you being the drone. The drone leaves the roundabout and continues to stay hovering above your hand because it's powered, according to George. So all he needs to do is back that bullshit by showing me a drone that leaves his hand and because it's powered, carries along in the reference frame that's spinning. Mmm... I don't think he'll be able to do that because it's utterly ridiculous. The powered flight of the drone doesn't mean that it continues to magically stay above your hand upon letting go. That powered flight of the drone is going to demonstrate a Coriolis effect. You're going to let go of the drone on the roundabout and the second it leaves the spinning non-inertial reference frame, you will observe a Coriolis effect. But George is claiming that you won't because the drone's powered. And it'll magically stay above your hand on the roundabout, even when it's flying. Utterly ridiculous, but a great demonstration and another example of just how senile George is to assert that a drone could stay hovering above your hand on a roundabout. No, George. Maybe you'd like to buy yourself a little drone, go and get yourself a little dribbly neck thing and sit on a roundabout. It'll look appropriate. And watch that drone not hovering above your hand when you let it go into free flight. Powered or otherwise, George, you'll be experiencing a uh, Coriolis effect when that drone leaves your hand. We talked about it earlier with Emerald. You know, there's only a fleeting second when it's retaining the angular momentum. Essentially, can be completely ignored. Because the second it leaves your hand, it demonstrates Coriolis effect. But again, George seems to be arguing that you don't experience Coriolis effect. Why is George flying in the face of Globe Earth rhetoric, Ranty? Right. He, well, why is arguing. he doing it? Right. Sorry, you got. Well, hold on a second, Ranty. You have the definition of the Coriolis effect from physics about the Coriolis effect, also called the Coriolis force, is defined as the apparent deflection of objects such as airplanes. Yeah, He's I'm not, not right denying... there. Yeah, I'm just telling you what their argument is. Which that's is that... there are, are re they're retards. They're not parroting okay. the right pseudo science. Right, so what he's what they're saying is that because the actual uh, engines, let's say, need to interact with something, so the engines need to interact with Gosh. the atmosphere, so they're still tethered to the atmosphere. That, this is what they're listen. Let, I'm <laughs> listen. I'm just passing this message. I on. get it. For let so let him repeat it. Go ahead, Ram. So listen. So. Because the uh, atmosphere is moving apparently with the Earth, the plane with uh, its engines, the helicopter with its blades, they are having a interaction still with the atmosphere. That is why they are uh, they could they don't appear to deviate. Yet with a bullet or a cannonball, 
uh, which is passing through the initial the same reference frame, frame. Same reference frame. <laughs> what, which what, is no, in the same atmosphere, right? What they're saying is that it's passing through it and not be not pushing through it, i.e., having no physical interaction with other than <laughs> passing through it. This is what they're saying. Listen, okay. you don't have to believe it. I don't have to believe it. I'm just telling. I'm just making. I'm, I'm just telling I'm you. Just clarifying. clarifying I already know their argument. I've been here three and a half years. Okay, I already okay. know the dumbass argument. So, yes. yes. So what what, what George is saying. No worries. Let me just summarize Ranty's. Uh, thank you for passing on the information, Ranty. So, what George Nettenuke's now explaining is if you're an aeroplane, you will track along with the roundabout. So. Same principle applies to a drone on a roundabout. He's saying that if you're powered, you will track with the roundabout because you're powered. But if you throw a yep. ball off the roundabout, you'll see a Coriolis effect. So yep. all we need him to demonstrate is a drone tracking with the rotating reference frame of a roundabout, as he claims is possible. Hovering. Say again. Hovering. The drone is hovering. It leaves your hand. The drone leaves your hand on a spinning roundabout, and you're in hover mode. Yeah. And then the drone follows you around, rotating on the roundabout. Yes. Right? That's, that's what he's claiming. Turn but that, out but, the but, but just one more thing. One more thing. In so demonstrating that a drone can track when hovering on the non inertial spinning reference frame. He must also concede that that would be a non-demonstration of the Coriolis effect, saying that there is no Coriolis effect. The exactly. drone moving with you isn't deviating. So George exactly. is essentially arguing against there being a Coriolis effect. <laughs> So, yeah. Exactly. So we need George to prove it by getting his drone on his roundabout so he can prove... Anti Coriolis effect, senile old bastard. And then show uh, us how closed thermos. Yeah. And then show us how closed thermos is an open system. I had a better idea. If you could get a helicopter, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just GPS curious. Say, system, rely on the if Earth. you had a hel helicopter that could go two miles high, and you strapped a, a gun facing absolutely vertical, straight down. Uh, and you had a cannonball next to it, so you release the cannonball, just let it free fall, and then you shoot the bullet through uh, through the gun. Uh, one will be still acting, and will be so. Hang on, wait a minute. So none of them should be acting with the atmosphere. So they should both move off hundreds of feet at least from the uh, exact position above. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You should fire it in the air. The bullet leaves the spinning reference frame and from your position on the ground it appears to curve away from you but actually you're still spinning on the ground with the inertial reference frame and the bullet's just going straight up and down as far as it's concerned in its reference frame it just appears to curve from your vantage point yes so far so good ranty so this could be tested then so this could be tested so we could hire a helicopter and test this theory we we, we don't need to ranty we already what did it with the charlotte hold on we don't need to, Ranty. We already tested it with the Charlotte, North Carolina flight to Los Angeles. It's already done. And it's done thousands of times each year. No, what I mean is if we drop a bullet, if we drop a ball, You're not it is not it. powered. It is not powered no. by anything. The same as a bullet isn't powered by anything. It isn't Doesn't interactive matter. with the atmosphere. So it should move. So as long as you can hover two miles up in a, in a helicopter, it, if it falls directly above where the helicopter is, there is no Coriolis. We already know that. Yes, I, already, we know. We I just know told you. We know what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. I we know. don't need right. to go that far. It's, it's, be, it's Man, because I... it's Ranty and QE. Even when they're in agreement, they're basically seeming like they're arguing. <laughs> yes, that's right. You're right, you're right Ranty, and you're in agreement with this. It's good. Everything's peachy. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, does everyone uh, understand? Way, yeah. yeah, you are getting copyright striked, by the way. <laughs> no, I didn't release. No, I didn't release no, any I'm video. Only I'm only joking. I wouldn't copyright strike. Yeah, anyone. and I wouldn't release that anyway. I told you I wouldn't. Now, does everyone understand? I don't know. Where did you get it from? I, I have no idea. Somebody sent it to me. They heard that I was looking for it, and they sent it to me. Ah, uh, right. Okay. It appears that I might have some fans out there. Maybe one or two. Now, does does everyone understand? that the argument calmly the argument isn't 
about the Coriolis effect proper. It's about the Coriolis effect causes. The Coriolis effect causes are a non-spinning inertial reference frame and an inertial reference frame. We take that over to Charlotte, North Carolina. The plane is going to be flying at 500 miles an hour, and it's going to be flying west to California. Meanwhile, the Earth is coming towards it, underneath it, from west to east at 860 miles an hour, according to the fairy tale paradigm. You have to combine both the airspeed of the plane and the ground speed coming towards it. That would be 1,360 miles an hour. If you have distance equals rate times time, you can solve this equation simply. It would take 1.5 hours for that Charlotte flight to reach Los Angeles. But what does it take? It takes 4.5 hours. That is the argument. It's over. You can turn out the lights on the spinning ball space monkey religion. Thank you very much. Well, that's the flat Earth argument. But what the globe Earthers would come? No, back that's and say, reality. That plane. That. Let me just finish what the globe Earthers would say. So, just to be fair, this is the flat Earth debates here. Uh, last two hours so, haven't been enough. So, so, <laughs> you know, what you walk, heck? you walk left, right. East, west, wherever you're still interacting with the floor, you're still moving at uh, what three miles an hour. Let's say you walk at three miles an hour. The plane, being a powered plane, is still interacting with the so-called "quote unquote" Earth because everything's moving at the same. Everything's moving, so it doesn't matter which direction it goes in; it'll still travel the same distance. It's like it's walking on the floor. The plane yes. is essentially like yeah. walking on the floor because it interacts with the atmosphere. Now that's what the globers would say. Okay. 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 That would be an argument that there is no Coriolis effect. Yes, I know this. Yeah. yeah I, the, I, why I, entertain it? I will get away with not being sued for slander when I say that George's senility is demonstrated by his assertion that an effect that can't take place by virtue of it defying gas law and multiple directions of surface winds is his way of asserting to the audience that there a is no Coriolis effect by way of something that flies in the face of gas law and multiple directions of surface winds. Now that is a demonstration of senility, especially when pointed out to somebody on multiple occasions. You know, so I would be asking, I'd be annoyed if I was a globe head. I'd be saying, George, why are you arguing for there being no Coriolis effect? But then they would try to quantify that there is Coriolis by saying that Snipe has taken into account the bullets. The bullet no, they don't. No, they, they don't. don't. I know they don't. <laughs> Just well, saying that. Well, 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 people, people can say whatever they want. Don't get they angry. Want, don't get angry. It's, it's all good. It's all good. All I'm going to say yeah, now is you, you can't have it both ways. That's where we get the term double speak. So what, the reason yeah. I ask them to clarify, does the earth rotate underneath, is because that's what you need to have Coriolis. So if they say it wrote, uh, we have Coriolis because Earth rotates under a bullet, then it must rotate under anything in that reference frame. It can't only apply to bullets and is definitely not negated by powered flight as exampled by a drone on a roundabout. Yes. The drone won't continue with the roundabout, it will leave it. And that's what must happen to have Coriolis. So by arguing that Earth and atmosphere travel as one or a tangential velocity of Earth spinning is retained when you leave it, they're essentially arguing for there being no Coriolis effect on Earth. But they simultaneously say there is with a bullet. You can't have it both ways. Yes, they don't realize it. Uh, can I share what I'm... What yeah, sorry, Paul. Share, yes, I did cut you off earlier. Go Thank ahead. You. Yeah, you're <laughs> presenting. I don't know if this, I mean, and this is not quite Coriolis effect, but I think it describes a little bit of what you're trying to say. Um, does it, you know, I don't know if you guys know how an aircraft carrier works. Like when the plane is sitting on the, on the deck, it's in one reference frame of the carrier. Plane takes off, and obviously the, when the plane takes off, the carrier is actually at full throttle, which is about 35 knots, so, or 30, 35 miles an hour. And the reason being they want to give as much momentum to the plane as possible with the catapult because you've got such a short distance. Well, if that plane takes off and it might reach its max speed of, let's say, 500 miles an hour after it leaves it, 
if it turns back towards the aircraft carrier, well, you've got to add the 500 miles an hour plus the 35, which is 535 miles an hour as the aircraft carrier is coming towards the plane, roughly. Is that kind of what you guys are saying in one sense of the word? It's the same example. Why would you use? Yeah, it is. But why would you use anything else than the Charlotte to L.A.? It's so easy. Anyone can understand it. Why put more variables in the equation to confuse people? Well, the reason I'm using an aircraft carrier because it could be something that's real world. That's the only reason I'm saying it. I'm just as another example. Well, the, what the, you're trying the, to illustrate. The real world is. You could you could even use the itself. same example that Planner Walk came came on here with. He literally said that a flight from New York to L.A. and we had him look it up, and he came here and said it. A flight from New York to L.A. would take longer than a flight from L.A. to New York. And when I asked him. How is that happening if the earth is spinning from west to east? He had no response for that. These guys don't understand their argument. Yep. Go ahead, 10th Ten, wanted to say something. Go ahead. Yes. The flight from Charlotte, North Carolina, or anywhere is real world. Exactly. Does everyone oh, understand, does everyone understand but, 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 that but, argument? But let me summarize. Let me summarize that short statement. When Coriolis comes up, it's their claim, not flat earthers' claim at all. So we say, good, what is it? And they always explain the effects. Well, wonderful. The football, the bullet, the pendulum, fine. What are the causes that allow that effect to then take effect? Oh, well, the earth is spinning in the non-inertial reference frame. And then the bullet is in the inertial reference frame. Oh, okay. So like an airplane. No, it doesn't work with an airplane. Why? Because it's powered. Oh, really? Have you been on a roundabout with a drone that's powered? Does it follow you when you let go? Or does it hover? Liars. Mentally ill. Good yeah, summary. they're mentally ill. Yeah, good, they're good, summary. good summary, 10th man. Yep. So assuming you guys are right then, think... and Coriolis is not a thing. What do you mean then assuming it be I'm really right? Easy to find a stool that crosses over the. Uh... The reason. Wait a minute. Hold on. Wait a minute. Do you... What do you mean you're assuming you. I'm right? Hold on. Do you live in the real world? You started your statement with assuming you're right and Coriolis is real. Well, Coriolis is real. It's a real effect. You can observe it on a roundabout with a drone. So that's how you've started. Like we're asserting something that isn't true when we talk about Coriolis. You're asserting that Coriolis is not a force. No, no, no. That's not where we're asserting. Tell him, Nathan. Tell him again. Coriolis is real. We're not arguing about what Coriolis is. We know what it is. But to have it on Earth, you need Earth rotating underneath. And you guys argue about how it doesn't, which wouldn't give you Coriolis. That's the crux of the argument. See, we have the Coriolis effect. You can easily demonstrate it on a roundabout. What we're saying is that if that's true, then if the Earth is rotating, then you must have Coriolis effect also. But we don't. In reference to the Earth, the Earth itself, there is no Coriolis effect. There is Coriolis effect on a spinning roundabout, really however. Easy. What? Yeah, and I'm just saying, really I don't think that quantifies really from what the Globers would say. Because the, they would they, say that you can't mimic you can't mimic uh, the Coriolis effect on the Earth over a, over a roundabout. It's impossible. Why not? Because it just, you know, I mean, even I can understand that from the Globers' right. point of view. Sure. Well, let me, let me <laughs> should it, it should even have let to be mimicked. It's not, not going to run it around. Should just be run there. Follow a, a roundabout. The roundabout this. isn't going to affect it at all. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but you can you can simulate the the with a tennis ball. Throw the tennis ball. Of course, you exactly. can show what it should do. But it's, the, the helicopter would never follow the the roundabout. Not sure. hovering, it wouldn't. You'd have to follow <laughs> the roundabout. You'd have to purposely point it in that direction. You still wouldn't make it. Can't cut those corners. <laughs> when Neil deGrasse Tyson said that the earth moved on the football pitch for that field goal to go in, he is saying it's the same as the roundabout. Yep, yep, exactly. And that was the end of the Baltard spinning space monkey religion. Thank you, Neil smoking deGrasse Tyson. Appreciate that, buddy. So examples tomorrow?
the example is him explaining that the ball gets thrown and when it leaves the earth, i.e. leaves kick, the hand of kick. the footballer, I'm sorry. it travels Nathan, in a kick. straight line. No, 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 Nathan, that's not what I'm saying. Examples of storms crossing over the equator. <laughs> storms, <laughs> hurricanes, <laughs> have you listened to my frigging Coriolis effect for really? three weeks? I I did Ball Busters Coriolis effect for three weeks and talked about these hurricanes, Right. And you, you dumbass. Cor Coriolis is not a thing on Earth. Then that should happen all the time. Let him make his, uh, hold on, QE. Let him make his statement. Go ahead, my friend. T tell us about the hurricanes. Well, if, if, the, if the claim is that Coriolis is a thing, but not on Earth, then storms should cross over the uh, equator all the time. Okay. So, do you appreciate that the Coriolis force is an apparent force so when they describe the deflection it's a not actual deflection do you appreciate that you cut out an awful lot no worries i'll try again it's my bad do, do you appreciate that the coriolis force is a not actual force that the deviation described is a not actual deviation. Like Neil deGrasse Tyson, the ball travels in a straight line, but from your position seems to deviate because the earth rotates underneath. Well, that's a not actual deviation. Ball straight line seems curving, isn't actually curving. Do you understand that? Okay, I don't understand how that any of that was related to the point that I was making, which was... Uh, it it is isn't. Yeah, okay, I'll really explain cut. how then. Now, answer me this. Given that you haven't actually conceded that Coriolis force is a not actual deviation, would you say that hurricanes are a not actual deviating thing or an actually deviating thing? You tell me. You mean it's, it's a circular wind pattern is the hurricane actually deviating or is it a not act so the hurricane's actually traveling in a straight line right it's just a long straight line but seems to be deviating from my position is that what's going on with hurricanes mate or is this hurricane thing got nothing to do with coriolis because you're describing an actual deviation where coriolis force is a not actual deviation you, you pointed out that what does that have to do with your argument to do with hurricanes i think the question should be better formulated as what do hurricanes have to do with coriolis force a not actual force not actual deviation in your actually deviating hurricanes you tell me brain box i'm <laughs> asking for an example of a hurricane crossing over the equator what does that have to do with anything? What does that have to, and what does that have to do with Coriolis effect exactly given that Coriolis is detailing not actual deviation? Explain to me how this has any relation on Coriolis given that you're bringing it up in that context and asking us questions. I'd like to know how it relates to a not actual deviation. You explain that to me. I'm, I'm a bit confused. Yeah, yeah this is just a bad question altogether. No, it's, it's begging the question because he's on the, the globe within the equator. Causes the uh, I can't hear him. Effect and prevents that from happening. Then <laughs> assuming that Coriolis is not really happening on Earth, then there should be examples of storms crossing over the equator. Sorry, assuming Coriolis <laughs> is not happening, assuming a not actual deviation, you're saying that this actual deviation described in these storms are what? I still don't see the connection where this deviating storm has anything to do with a not actual force, not actual deviation. You, you, you still haven't drawn that connection, my friend. I don't see the link. He's also affirming the consequences, by the way. A, on the planet that we have, spinning the way it does, it's impossible for a storm to cross over the equator. <laughs> it's, it's just repeated the same thing. <sighs> he just repeated the same thing. Uh, have you got? Have you What's got the connection? It's, it's it's okay. It's a deer in the headlights. That's what it is. It's 
take it slowly and calmly. The connection is that you're saying step something one. doesn't happen. Step one, don't talk and through me. Happen, step one, then you don't talk when you should listen. Step one. Step one. Do you appreciate that the Coriolis force is a not actual deviation? Do you appreciate that? Yes or no? Storms even exist are evidence of Coriolis. Answer the no, no, question. It's deer, it's deer in the headlights again. It's, yeah. it's, he's so yeah. deer in the headlights he can't even comprehend the words I'm saying to him. Try and listen. Take a yeah, breath. Maybe I know. sip some water. You're YouTube, uh, back to you're rule number one. Don't say. talk when I'm, I'm talking. Yeah, it. that's back to rule one. Don't just start talking through me. I'm asking you to listen. Maybe comprehend the words I've used. Maybe give a coherent response that tallies up with the question being asked. Try that. My question, for the love of Jesus. <laughs> so, so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> do you appreciate that Coriolis effect is a not actual deviation that is describing something that in in reality in no way is deviating no you don't appreciate <laughs> it that's okay so on a on a roundabout when you throw a ball from the spinning roundabout the ball leaves your hand and travels essentially for this example in a straight line yeah do you understand the example so far yeah so that straight line is the actual trajectory through that frame of reference straight line now you on the roundabout are going to curve and from your position it looks like the ball curves away from you do you understand so far yeah. so the deviation in the Coriolis force the force that is not actually a force it's an apparent force is the force described in the deviation that you see when you curve away from the ball that travels in a straight line do you follow so far so what are you trying to ask if stor storms actually curve no we're not on storms again it's deer in the headlights can't comprehend the words haven't mentioned storms try and focus ball straight line you curving do you comprehend this you're not curving you're moving in a straight line no you're on a roundabout it's curving indefinitely so in a why are you talking you're wrong i'm correcting you this is going to be tedious if you say i'm wrong when I'm correcting you, who has just stated that you are not curving on the non-inertial spinning reference frame. It's spinning in a circle. I assure you, you are curving. Do you concede or do you want to be a dick? You are curving. Ball, straight line. You underneath curving. Yes? In your roundabout example, yes. Yes, in a roundabout example, as clarified by me several times, yes. In my roundabout example, the Coriolis force will be the apparent deviation you observe as you curve underneath a ball that travels in a straight line. Yes? In your example, yes. Yes, in my example, yes. That's what is Coriolis effect. It's not my example. It's a very tedious and drawn out detailing of the Coriolis force. The force which you perceive as the ball curving when it actually goes straight. Do you understand? No. No? That's where we disagree. <laughs> Oh, dear. <laughs> That's going to be a stumbling block. So, okay. Because you're... you're oh, right. uh, you guys okay. Serious? That's not everyone's cue. That's man. not everyone's cue. So, you're saying the ball does curve? 
I'm saying storms do actually. We're not talking avoid. about storms. You, ca you clarified four times in my example. You said it four times. Not in your example. You made it clear we're talking about my example, didn't you? You gave clarity that you understood we were talking about my example. So let's not juxtaposition my. Let's not give a juxtaposition between my position and your storms when we're definitely just clarifying that you understand what Coriolis is with a very simplistic example that does not include storms and is just you conceding that the force described in Coriolis is the apparent curving of the ball which actually travels straight. I just need you to say yes in your example. Ball goes straight. I see it curving, not really curving, actually straight, the essence of Coriolis. But you're saying no at this point, heaven forbid why. Yes, everything about your example and everything you said there is completely correct. Excellent. But it doesn't apply to the reason. Excellent. So, the thing that is moving in the inertial reference frame isn't actually curving. It's moving in a straight line. Like your storms must be moving in a straight line, but seeming to deviate if it's anything to do with Coriolis effect. Is that what storms do? Travel in a straight line, but seem to deviate? <laughs> uh -huh. Kablooey. Uh, let him respond, please. You still haven't addressed the original question. This is so <laughs> tedious. You started I'll it. I'll ask I was the like, question oh, again, God. just so he has a few seconds, dear, in the headlights. Do your storms travel in a straight line, but appear to deviate? As in, are affected by this Coriolis force we're talking about when we talk about apparent deviation? as opposed to actual deviation, like you might see in a storm. You're misrepresenting what I'm trying to get at, Nathan, or completely trying to avoid it because it uh, oh, uh, Projection. So I'm not avoiding anything. I'm making my position really tediously and slowly clear. I'm not obfuscating anything. You're not asking me anything. I'm explaining what Coriolis is and what you need to happen and what isn't deviating in it. Yeah? So, we're not actually deviating. The ball's not actually curving. Do your storms actually curve? Or is it apparent <laughs> deviation described in storms? Maybe you'll obfuscate and project onto me that I'm obfuscating a point you're asking here. <laughs> well, either you're lying or you don't understand. It's not a lie. It's a question. <laughs> Are your storms apparently deviating because of Coriolis force? Not a lie. Or, Question. Or are they actually deviating? They are actually deviating. Then it doesn't have anything to do with the Coriolis effect! Hello. I, th I think it's taken us quite <laughs> some Rest time to peace. drag a moron, kicking and screaming and denying and obfuscating slowly and painstakingly through the point we made. Initially, that he didn't get. You're talking about actual deviations when you talk about storms, and that's not Coriolis. So my question we asked earlier, what the hell does this storm shit have to do with Coriolis, my friend? Beautiful. Because the, the Coriolis effect acting on the atmosphere prevents any storm from crossing <laughs> the, the Coriolis effect doesn't act on anything. It's a not actual force, idiot. Which is my point, you haven't... No, you're saying it's acting on something. That would be something that forces do, and definitely not something Coriolis does. Turn out the lights, party's over, globe tards. This is so beautiful. Love it. The Dunning-Kruger here is amazing. Now this claiming we so have done in Kruger. Wow, really? Yeah, done in Kruger from you. You don't even <laughs> understand what the hell you're More saying, projection. bro. You call it, you talking about Dunning and Kruger, bro? You're out of your mind. Outside of this room, yeah. you're out of your mind. <laughs> I, 
let me let me ha- let me have them just for thirty seconds. From the ahead. poster on child, you came on this. Hold on, you came coming from the poster child of Dunning Kruger. He projects Dunning Kruger on us. I know. Price. We we could go have, ahead. Ted. We could have accurately summarized that situation as Dunning Kruger, but instead it was done by way of projection onto us. Epic. So especially because the 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 prior statement was actually Dunning Kruger. Mm-hmm. So good good job. He, Ahead, he Tenton. started off. He started off by citing a hurricane, and tying it to an equator, and then saying, "On this planet, fine, Coriolis, Earth-based, is your argument. We never, on our side, say there is Earth-based Coriolis, but we do believe there's Coriolis, as the roundabout demonstration proves it. So Coriolis can easily." easily be tested so since you brought up equator and you brought up planet then you also must believe the earth underneath moves at a thousand thirty eight miles per hour at that equator and if the earth moves then anything in the second reference frame the inertial reference frame would what finish this one for me would deviate You'd experience apparent deviation on the inertial reference frame. You'd see it curving to the right, curving to the left, and in that object, in the aeroplane, or if you're all the ball, you're going to have the inertial reference frame turning underneath you. You'd need that to occur, and it doesn't. And do we experience that? No. Alrighty then. What causes storms then? I don't even know. What, what yes, cause storms? That's a red herring. That's what attacking causes storms? That doesn't, doesn't have anything to do with Coriolis as we painstakingly detailed a moment ago. Don't matter. It's, yeah, it has something to do with Coriolis, Coriolis hurricanes, the way they rotate and shit, and, you know? That's, that's, that's <laughs> this sounds like it. a real retard. <laughs> yeah, the way they ro- rotate and a shit. What, the, way they, the way they deviate <laughs> and shit. The way they deviate and shit, e- yeah? Echo, echo, echo. Chamber, chamber, chamber. Hey, dude, the way they deviate and shit, yeah? Yeah, de- shit. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, they deviate. Yeah, yeah. They go different. They they rotate differently. The, the north south. It's, yeah, they, it's they deviate amazing. differently. How does that happen? Yeah, yeah, they? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mate. Coriolis is detailing things that don't actually deviate. <laughs> they He's still right now. Listen, listen, listen. Wait a second. A whole hour discussion. That's a Coriolis. No, you. He didn't listen to that whole Coriolis. demolition for the other you guy did. at all. He you was need just to peel this out in the sand. And you need to peel this out as a special Coriolis instruction. I'm serious, dude. I, never... I, don't, I don't mind. I don't mind trimming it out. It's quite long, though, isn't it? <laughs> the guy <laughs> like doesn't yeah. know the difference between actual and apparent. Yep. You got it. When discussing hurricanes or storms or anything like that, it all boils down to apparent versus actual. You got it. It's just that simple. Oh, so it's not rotating differently? One's rotating the other, and one's the other a mirror. Well, there's one going through a wall. Yeah, it's actually a doing it. That means state. it doesn't have anything to do with the Coriolis effect. <laughs> Duh, you still don't get it, do you? Fucking Coriolis. You still don't get it. You guys redefine all these You just listen to words. Wiki Parroters. You just listen to Wiki Parroters on the Weather Channel. You know, the weatherman talking about the Coriolis effect. But you just don't get it. As soon as we scratch underneath the surface and explain the nuts and bolts of the Coriolis effect and all the reference frames, all that horse shit falls apart. But you just don't get it, do you? And with that, I'm going to say a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of you who tuned in on the Nathan Oakley 1980 premiering stream for hopefully smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, and all that good stuff. Be sure to check out NathanOakley.com and the Flat Earth Debate Forum to keep up to date with the community debate. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!